Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 29 of the Smite Update. My name is Octane Pro, and as always, joined by my handsome co host, we do have FG3000. How's it going, Stud Muffin? Whoa, man, <laughs> you're pouring it on today. I like it. I like this. This is a change of face. Keep it up. Keep that's it up. right. That's right. That's right. So, how are you, man? Doing good, man. I just uh, been playing Zeus all day, and I just okay. talked about it in chat. Um, I think people don't realize that Zeus's damage increased by 14% um, now that his model's been updated. Um, please don't quote me on that. <laughs> yeah, right. I uh, Yeah, I actually had a chance. Uh, we started Smite Update a little bit late today because the Tier Monster Code Green uh, tournament was going on. And uh, so to kill some time, I was playing some threes and uh, had a great time with that. Uh, played Rom and then went ahead and played uh, Damage Ymir. And uh, mm. had a blast. Oh, yeah, it was Damage Ymir. And then uh, I had on my team a Kali and a Kronos. And so, you know, Ymir was mostly, you know, with, with damage there. There was a Void Stone in there as well. Uh, but, uh, it, you know, towards the end, I picked up Sovereignty. But, you know, either way, it was it was awesome. I had so much fun um, on playing that. And definitely was a good time. Uh, but uh, haven't had Magic a chance. Ymir is legit. Oh, it legit, is. Legit, legit. It's, it's so good. <laughs> it's so, so good. Lord Wizkid in chat. Sorry for making you late. Hey, it's all good. It works out great. It worked out fine. We started about an hour late, but it's okay. I'll uh, I'll hold you to it. You owe me some tier monster codes because of that, sir. Um, but uh, outside of that, uh, if you guys aren't familiar with what Smite Talk is, Smite Talk is a podcast and show that is very open discussion, very relaxed, where we go ahead and take calls directly from you guys. We already have about 10 people in raid call right now waiting to go ahead and ask us questions. Uh, if you guys are interested, look directly below my graphic. Uh, if you're on Twitch here, live stream, you can see it says, you know, uh, we're using raid call and you just use the group ID code 7461039. So go out to raidcall.com, download the program, create an account. Once you get into it, there's a search bar in the top left-hand corner for channels. Type in Smite Talk or type in that ID number. You'll be able to find it. And then once you get into, it's it's very much like a mumble or like a uh, team speak. Uh, Buddha is our moderator in there, which will touch base with you via like it has built in IM. Just message you. Make sure you have a legitimate question. Also make sure your audio is working for your mic uh, and everything. And uh, then you'll be put uh, kind of on the list in order to call in. And I will say shout outs to Buddha. Like I used to have to moderate this myself without having someone do it. And by being on the show, you know, talking about stuff and then having to IM every person and trying to check. Like, I don't have the ability to check audio. Well, he can. He can check it live with being in that channel. So, shout out to Buddha. He's been a big help. I, I like, can only throw gem so many gems at him. Like, I constantly throw gems at him and stuff. And I'm like, I can't pay you right now, but thank you for all the work you do. And so, I think now he's at a point where he's like, I don't need any more gems. Like, you've given me plenty. So, um, special thanks to Buddha for help helping us out here. Um, before we dive in, Reminder to everybody in chat that this show um, is available on iTunes and also on Android. So we actually have a pretty large uh, iTunes audience, guys, that listen to this audio uh, only. I mean, this show is very much only audio driven. Same thing with Smart Update. Um, and uh, we have a nice large audience out there um, in regards to that. Check it out. You know, they download it, listen to it on the way to work, on the way to school, when they're at the gym, uh, and they're going away on vacation. They want their smite fix. You know, uh, they have they have the ability to. So, um, shout outs to them. And if you guys aren't familiar, go check it out. Uh, we have a pretty decent audience out there. Um, as well, guys, we take emails throughout the show. And uh, feel free to email us, smitetalk at gmail.com. Um, we pretty much have been pretty good at getting to every email. Um, we we get, you get the emails in and we will read them the following show. So if you email us tonight, we, we might read it tonight. Uh, if we have too many, we'll go ahead and uh, check it out um, You know, next week uh, and definitely discuss it as well. So once again, smitetalk at gmail.com. Uh, so you ready to jump in here, FG? Let's do it. We're starting with uh, questions or we're starting with calls. What are we doing? What are we doing? Uh, let's let's start with our first discussion and then we'll go ahead and jump into some calls and stuff like that. I like it. I like your style. Uh, everyone <laughs> does. Everyone does. I like the hair too. <laughs> I was fixing my hair in the camera. I'm like, wait, wait, wrong. I went and tried to fix it on the right. I was like, nope, nope. Got to fix it on the left there. <laughs> the perfect little swoosh. I know, nothing right? Nothing on you. That's actually. right. That's right. Bam. I'm going to go ahead and copyright this right here. Copyright the swoosh. So what do we got? What do we got? So, as we always have on the show, a little bit of God discussion. We always talk about 
the most overpowered gods. Well, that, actually, this is going to be kind of different because this god is pretty powerful. But we always talk about the most underpowered gods, the mo most overpowered gods. What about all the gods in the middle? The who? There's a lot of gods the in who? the middle. The who? The Thor. Let's talk about Thor. This is actually perfect timing considering the tournament. Yep. Thor is one of those gods. First of all, let me just flat out say Thor is probably between him and maybe like Hun bots, probably the best late game junglers in the game, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but the, the most curious thing about Thor and the reason why I brought him up today is because I tell new players about Thor and I'm, I tell them, hey, if you want to play an assassin that has a really high skill cap that you can change the outcome of a game. Thor is an assassin. He's like a warrior. He's like a guard. He's like all those classes in one. Um, he has the ability to set up kills, uh, cut off kills. He has the ability to be in the middle of a fight. He has the ability to initiate. He has two escapes. Thor is like, oh my God, how do you not play Thor? But I, I feel like new players just don't touch him. And I have no idea why new players don't play him. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm responding back to something real quick. Uh, so... No, I completely agree with you. I mean, Thor, um, it's, it's interesting, like, how far Thor has come, to be honest with you, um, and how far we've seen him come, to be honest. You know, if you look at Thor, like, Thor was one of those gods that came out very, very early on, uh, was one of the first few gods out there. Um, and, uh, you know, Thor is one of those gods which everyone knows the name Thor. Like, if it's not from the movies, it's from the comics. Um, and so Thor is a very well, you know, known god. Um, it was interesting when we had high-res Chris, Chris on, we were kind of discussing, like, um, what was the term he used? I don't want to say, like, a poster god, but... Um, something yeah, he, something like that. Yeah. Something like that, where he was saying that, like, you know, the, you know, the, you know Thor is a North American god uh, in regards to, like, a poster god. Or, I forget the terminology. High-res Chris, posted chat, tell me what it is if you're there. Uh, but, you know, Thor, Thor, you know, is so well known. And so, you know, we so, we see him marketed a lot on the on the Smite content as well because um, everyone knows who he is. And his, his depiction of him is like spot on too. The, the depiction is very easy. Uh, there's a lot out there about him specifically. Um, not necessarily, somebody says iconic, not necessarily iconic. But um, when you look at where Thor was early on in the game, he was very strong when he came out, very, very well picked up. His mobility was spot on. He, his ultimate, he was one of the first gods to go up in the air with an up ultimate. Up in the air, You yes. know, uh, if you remember early on in Smite, um, you know, everything was on that playing field at, at ground level. But yet what happened was, you know, Thor came out and his ultimate was like, wow, like this is a huge deal. We have a god that now can take to the skies example. And now, you know, we're not only limited to the ground and being able to have that bird's eye view and, and it was huge. It really was. And, and Thor was picked up time and time again. Um, his ability to use his, his teleport on his hammer to, to cut right through walls to get a gank off was amazing or to steal something. It still is right now. Um, yeah. I feel like Thor kind of... Like he, he started out when it was going high, like across the graph here, and then ended up going real, real low. Like, like he dipped down, wasn't played a ton, especially in the competitive scene. Um, casual plays a little bit. Well, there different. was a time he was bugged. There was oh, a time yeah. where his double tap was only doing rank one damage, no matter how high you leveled it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, like, he, he kind of went down on the graph here. And, and then now I feel like, and because of some of the, the competitive play right now, we see him up. He's on the up and up right now. Without a doubt. And it's not like anything with, like, there weren't like huge changes. I just feel like it's the way the meta shifts. You know, when a player comes in and is able to capitalize on some of the skill sets that Thor has. So, uh, I mean, at this time, I mean, I think Thor's in a really good place. We haven't really seen like huge adjustments to him in quite a while. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's in perfect. Looks like the chat is pretty much in agreement saying that he is perfect balance, even though he's yeah. really strong and he can dramatically carry a team. Like he can, if, if you're playing against a well-played Thor, he could just make you hate life. But this is really cool that the chat said, no, but he's still balanced. He's still very, very balanced. And that's, that's like perfect. A guy that you can play really, really well with if you're just good, but yeah. not because his kit is overpowered. Yeah, no, no, that's a, that's a very good point, um, you know, uh, for him uh, to be exact. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll definitely you know, ask people's opinions as they call in. Uh, we have quite a number of people waiting to call in. We have Ty, that is uh, our, our first caller that we're going to be going ahead and, and bringing on. Um, so uh, any, any last comments you want to make specifically about Thor, just kind of discussing him before we grab him? Play Thor. If you're a brand new jungler and you're mm -hmm. like ranking up from 1 to 30, do it early. Play Thor early because I think people are scared of him because he has the ability to screw over your team with mm -hmm. Tectonic Rift. He yeah. can make it so you don't secure a kill because you missed it. But practice him, practice him early. You will be glad you did. 
<laughs> um, yeah, w without a doubt here. Um, so uh, let's go ahead here. Um, trying to grab someone on the call here. Let me see if I can fix this here. Uh, let's see. Sorry, nice little time period. Ty's been in the he's been in the raid call before I even got here. He's been here a while. Yeah, 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 with for sure. Okay, now that I have have, have delayed uh, things uh, and so professional, what can I say? Typing away here. <laughs> um, let's go ahead. We'll bring in Ty, who's our first caller here. Uh, Ty, welcome to Smite Talk. You're definitely no stranger for calling in. How's it going? <laughs> Ah, it's going great. How's it going with you? Welcome. It's, it's good. So, what do you want to talk about today? Um, I think I have four things to talk about. Wow, Whoa. go for it. Whoa. Four things? Is that a lot? I mean, three of them are gods. I mean, we don't have to talk about all of them. It's up to you guys. No, go but, for it. Go, go for ahead. It. Get, get us started okay. here. Okay, so the first god I want to talk about is Osiris. And I want to know what you, what your guys' opinions are on him. I feel like sure. the position the position he is he's in right now, I think he may need adjustments because... Um, if uh, the tournament we just saw, I think he was banned like every single game <laughs> first. Now, yep. I don't, I don't think Hyrez, uh wants any god to be in that position. Um, but do you think that's just because of the current meta, or do you think his kit is actually overpowered? I want to know what your opinions were on it. Well. You know, with Osiris, I mean, he's definitely one of the ones that I look to when I'm in a ban position to ban out, like, as quickly as I can, to be honest with you. Um, you know, uh, now it's new while, then moving on to Osiris. Um, but I feel like with Osiris, like, it's kind of that argument where when he first came out, I was like, this guy's not a warrior. He's an assassin because of his, his attack speed and his burst. But yet, with some of his kit, it leans him more towards, you know, the, the warrior mindset and stuff. So I still think he's better fit for an assassin, but... Uh, just because of the way that he's banned out time and time again. Um, I don't know. What do you think, FG? I mean, we've talked about Osiris a decent amount, but but what, what do you think it is about him right now that puts him kind of in that auto ban slot? The the issue with Osiris is his his physical protections, right? So obviously his physical protections are a really, really big reason why. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> um, that was Ty's, mic that was, that was Ty's uh, microphone, I think. Whew. Gotcha. Um, his physical protections just allow him to outbox pretty much anyone, right? Mm -hmm. If you're going against another physical jungle, he is going to kill you. He's going <laughs> to pop his three. He's going to be able to defend all your attacks. He's going to slow you down so he's not missing his auto attacks. Yeah. He is a boxing beast. But the problem with adjusting him is if you take away all the physical protections, I don't. I think he's not even worth picking at that point. So Correct. I think the reason why High Res hasn't really done anything yet because I don't even think they know what they want to do with Osiris. And I Ooh. feel that if Ooh, it's not a numbers okay. change, it's not a numbers change. I think they're going to yeah. do a fundamental kit change like they did with Nemesis when they changed her three. They play with the numbers. They play with the numbers. They're like screw it. We just need to change how her three works. And I think they're going to do something similar to Osiris. And I'm not sure when that's going to happen because you're right. He's he's first band first pick yep. type of thing. So. I'm not sure when it's going to happen, but uh, I think they're going to change something about his kit. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I can okay. imagine for sure. Not before they nerf Nua, but you know, sometime after that. <laughs> fake Wa. Her Funny. name is Fake Wa. Funny that you bring her up. <laughs> okay. Because my next god is going to be uh, about Nude Wa. Okay, Nude Wa. Um, I like it. Nude Wa. I like it. Um, That's a good thing, though. I like Fake Wa better. I don't want her to have anything good about her. Nude, <laughs> nude yeah. <laughs> um. I think she's overpowered. I think no disagreement. Uh, yeah, her two through two three uh, combo is absolutely ridiculous. Another thing yeah, that yeah. I really hate about her is that she can move when she comes back down from her alt. I yeah. think that is a little stupid. Um, uh, another god like Rom. One of the most things uh, vulnerable about him is that His alt, he yeah. comes right back down from where he left off. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. What do you guys think about her? Well, Rom has he much. has his little dash after that. Well, so, then he can't use roll. You can still shut him down, though. You Barrel can still... roll! But, like, yeah. he's still vulnerable. Like, if, uh, right. let's say if Ymir stands under him or something, you can time that. Whereas with New Wash, you can, like, oh, Ymir's there. I'm just going to, like, move right out of the way mm -hmm. and, and, and miss your ult. Or, yeah, I don't know. That's one I thing. I'm inc not... Incredibly frustrating. Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not too... That doesn't bother me too much because I don't think all gods that go up in the air have to follow the same rules as Rom. Yeah. So I'm actually okay with no. her being able to scoot just a little bit. Um, that, that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you feel about it, Octane. Um, 
I don't I find know. her I... ultimate like going up in the air and then and then placing a little bit different uh, as the biggest issue for me with her. I think just the amount of CC she has and burst that she has available to her. I mean, her yeah, ult yeah. definitely catches you off guard and requires you to get beads, which will go ahead and get rid of that that symbol on you that targets you or Aegis to bite to eat the damage. Um, you know, as well. I mean, I that's not exactly where I'd stick her for the adjustments that need to be made. We're like, wow, like that is the breaking point. Like that's what makes her so no, strong. No. But, no, that, yeah, you know, that's for sure. Yeah, but no, I mean, for her, for me, I just feel it's the fact of her having the root, having the clay soldier damage that happens and, and the explosive uh, clay soldiers that occurs and stuff I, like I, that. I, I really hate how they, like, dash towards you. Mm -hmm. That's incredibly frustrating. Mm -hmm. Incredibly yep. frustrating. Yeah. No, I can yeah. agree. Yeah, and it's, and it's pretty much, even though Neath is one of my favorite hunters, you know, when Neath has a weave on the ground, all you have to do is just aim for the weave if someone's next to you, and you're going to do the damage. Now, Nuwa has that on such an easy demand, <laughs> right? Yeah. She just pops her clay soldiers. If you're, like, in a skirmish in the middle of the jungle or something like that, clay soldiers are going to go right towards you. All you have to do is just throw your three in the direction of the clay soldiers. Explosion stun. Wow. What? <laughs> yeah. So, it, I, I just think that it's... I hate to I hate to use the word easy mode, but I think that's a little it's <laughs> too. E her two three is so easy to set up. When you compare that to like you know other people that have to set up abilities like maybe an Al Kwong, a Squall to an ultimate, that's yeah. like guaranteed damage, right? Other gods have setups that aren't necessarily guaranteed. I feel like that new Oz is like bink bink, you're getting hit by both. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So what other questions you got? Uh, okay, oh, so last and it's just magic protection. What? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the last god I wanted to talk to you about was Odin. Okay, what about him? Odin. Um, do you think he needs a kit change? Who did? Been, in particular, did, his ult. Yeah, I, think we, I forget who we talked about now. Odin with. Hmm. Hi, Chris. Is who yeah, we talked about it with. that's right. That's right. <laughs> you weren't even on the show and you know. I'm like, I don't remember, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I, so you're asking, do we like, think he needs a kit change? Is that what I'm saying? Do you think say? he needs a kit change? I mean, I think a lot of gods that come out now that have dashes, leaps, uh, or any other forms of escapes, and I think uh, also like the running around in the circle, I think is kind of kind of stupid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know, what, I don't know about kit him? change. I think a tweak is necessary with his ultimate. I, I think the rest yeah, of his kit, the rest of his kit's fine. To be honest with me, I mean, I'm honest. To be, you know, uh, I, I think it works. But for his ultimate. Uh, you know, something that Chris said, he was like, you alt and then you chase people around and hope you can catch them. Now we were talking about how it'd be nice is when you alt inside of that ring, people are crippled. Um, you know, that and we, yeah, we had kind of talked about how that would be a huge advantage for him. Then their leaps and stuff like that wouldn't work unless you like, which then will require them to like pop beads or Aegis and then use your leap. Um, or, or or popping beads and popping a sprint to get away, whatever it is. So I think it would mm. it would allow the ultimate to be more valuable, and so that's kind of what we talked about there with that. So what about you? What do you think, FG? Yeah, I like that. Maybe you close the cage. Like, what if that happens? Oh, you know, above closes, it. You can't backflip out there. <laughs> or one one other thing I thought about is what if during the duration of the cage, the there are more spears come in so that the cage gets oh. smaller and smaller and smaller. I mean, there's a couple of different things they can do with it, but one thing I now that I've been a victim of kit changes with Kali and, yep. and fake Wa, I hope they <laughs> don't take that away because it's fundamental. There are people that love Odin because of that ring. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, I feel, feel yeah. I would feel really bad if they took it out completely. Um, so I hope they can think of a way to keep it in. Um, the rest of his kit is pretty good. He has a great, uh, great leap. Um, his steroid, his attack speed steroid oh, is awesome. so awesome. It's like, awesome. It feels so good. Like when I play Odin and I pop that for my team, even though, I mean, it's okay for Odin also, but when you pop that for your team under a tower, you feel like that's the ability that makes you feel like you just, I just did something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, I like the rest of his kit. I think the only thing he really needs is a change to his ultimate, maybe some number tweaks, but mm -hmm. um, hopefully we'll uh, see it soon. Yeah, I, I feel like his ult is the only ult that could potentially kill your teammate if you screw it up. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> that's true. No, that's really true. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah, we'll we'll, like we'll tie. We appreciate you coming on, man. Yeah. Oh, just sorry. One more question. Sure. Um, uh, it was about the uh, Code Green uh, events for Tier Monster. Yep. Um, the eligibility it said you have to have a current ranking on the uh, arcadia or paradise ranking letter how exactly do you get into that ranking fg all you, you gotta know? do is play games after you uh make an account on tiermonster.com you're automatically okay. tracked that's all you gotta uh, do okay i wasn't sure i wasn't sure man 
Glad somebody knows that. Well, Ty, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks a lot. So as much as I, I, I love callers like that, we'll limit it to one question per person because we have an awful lot of people in chat right now. Um, so let's go ahead. We'll take one more, another call here. Um, poo poo, welcome to Smite Talk. How's it going? What? It's good. How are you guys doing? Good. How are you? Good. So um, what, do you, what do you want to talk about today? Um, I just have a couple questions on Yamir. Yamir. Oh, we have an expert. We have an expert right here with Octane. I'll what just do you be got? quiet. What do you got? Well, first of all, I feel his passive is overpowered. Okay. What Just, makes what makes you say that? He does a hundred percent more damage mm -hmm. on any target, any mm -hmm. target um, affected by his frostbite. Mm -hmm. Which sort of, and plus it's a slow, mm -hmm. I believe. So it basically just sets everyone on your team to just kill, mm -hmm. which I feel a little bit overpowered. Okay, so for those people not familiar, uh, his passive is Frostbite. All of Ymir's abilities that affect enemies apply a debuff to the enemy called Frostbite. All of Ymir's basic melee strikes against a target uh, afflicted by Frostbite do 100% more damage. Um, I think it's giving him... See, Ymir is a god that his kit is very much very CC-based. Um, if you think of it, like his ice wall right off the back. It's all to wall off someone from entering or, or, or you know, from escaping a, a certain area in jungle or in lane. I love going ahead throwing this against like a Zeus or someone like that. They get st all of a sudden stuck right in the corner. Um, his Glacial Strike is, is a very one of very few uh, abilities that actually do damage there uh, but it does apply frostbite as well and then you know pretty much you know everything if you look and then uh, frost breath which is his main cc which pretty much frost breath is one of those items where like you either wall off in frost breath or you frost breath and wall um, and then uh, you finally have your, your, your shards of ice so uh, I don't know that I would say Ymir is overpowered I think he's one of the top cc gods when it comes down to in guardian placement where like so much of his kit is built off of each other um, if you were to change something about him, what would it be? Um, I would just reduce the amount of percentage that his attack, well, I don't know what it's called, but Frostbite, like, yeah. fr go from like 100% to, I don't know, maybe 50 or 75 mm. or just a tad bit lower. What, what do you think, FG? Mr. Face Punch Ymir himself. Um, <laughs> I, I kind of agree with you. I don't think, uh, I, I don't know. It just doesn't really... Ymir and his, his melee attacks aren't really what I fear when I play Ymir. It's really his Frost Breath. Well, yeah. Um, he's going to be strong. But, I mean, I guess you, you're kind of looking at it as a built-in poly um, that mm -hmm. Ymir pretty much has all the time. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think he's under overpowered. I think the, peop the thing that people really fear about him is his CC. And even if they took away, even if they made his, his pass at 50%, he would still be very strong. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you look at Ymir and his his play style, Ymir is not, like, on top of you like I feel like an Athena is when you're in lane. Um, I feel like Ymir, you know, his ice wall is definitely distance-based. Even his even his glacial st strike is not right on top of you. It's a little bit away, a few meters. Same thing with, like, Frost Breath. You know, you're the, you, most of the time with Frost Breath, you're, like, catching someone at the very edge of that Frost Breath there. So yeah. most of the time, Ymir is not doing, uh, you know, it doesn't get a lot of melee strikes off of you. Now, granted, if you pick up the speed buff, uh, if you're lucky enough to get that, because most of the time you should be handing that off to like your ADC or, or a mage that's trying to rotate a little bit faster in there. If you do get speed buff with Ymir, you know, you are going to get a few more melee hits on your opponents because of just being able to chase them down a little bit easier. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I can understand, you know, but, you know, I don't see. I think Ymir's been in, in the game long enough where High res has been able to critique him very well. Very well, to be honest yeah. with you. But all also, right. Go ahead. Like what do you got? I also feel that like also his kit is very well put together like it can do a lot of things mm -hmm. like if you know how to use his kit correctly you'll become very good at him yeah all yeah. of his abilities just make sense in a team fight like yeah. you yep. know what you're supposed to do when you mm -hmm. play Ymir yep yep and I agree just one more thing sure. um, I was playing Apollo not more than 25 minutes ago uh -huh. and um, I just destroyed like I went like thirty six and four, mm -hmm. and on, in your opinion, what makes him so viable? Like I'm terrible at the game, and I did that well as mm -hmm. Apollo. So, sure. like, what would you think makes him so viable in ranked play and then even casual play? 
I think it's uh, in casual play. Uh, he he is not a strong god. I feel like to pick up on and 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 um, capitalize on. I think his kit is pretty basic, to be honest with you. Um, uh, as for a competitive play, I think his mobility is what lends him to be so good. Uh, when I go ahead and look at him and I see like Barracuda or Zapman or, or Reels or, and stuff like that playing him, um, you know, it, it's the mobility factor. It's the factor of being, you know, that ultimate, uh, you know, his, his, uh, I, that ultimate is, is what I feel is what makes him uh, as good as what he is. Um, so that, that's kind of my perspective. What do you think, FG? Audacity. Mm. <laughs> the, the man is... Um... I, the reason why I think you do so well when you play Apollo is um, it's just really his his ability to box other hunters is actually pretty good. Mm. Um, his mesmerize gives you protections. Um, his dash is easy to either um, to uh, go aggressive or defensive with. You also have your escape parachute in your ultimate, or you can turn around and engage with it. Um, his one is actually pretty easy to hit because you're not you don't you're not stuck in your one. Yeah. You can kind of just flip your one a little bit to hit people with um and then yeah. if all else fails and you are two and eight with apollo you can always backdoor <laughs> you can always backdoor thanks to audacity was so, that was it zap man was it zap man that backdoored at the launch tournament was it the launch tournament or no it was another tournament it, it might have been i feel I like he's he, done it so many times yeah that's right he's a back he's the backdoor queen um, <laughs> Um, but uh, his damage just gets insane. Once you get like a full build on Apollo, you're level 20. He is chunking your life away. And that's, I mean, yeah. he's a hard carry. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, true. I killed someone with two shots towards the end of yeah. the game. Oh, yeah. Which is pretty fun. Oh, yeah. He, I mean, his snowballing is really, like, it's really strong. Uh, but, anyways, uh, thank you very much for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. All righty. All righty. Let's go ahead and take our next caller here. Let's see. Is this Shark? Is this. Shark, I don't know. Let's see here. Welcome to Smite Talk. How's it going? How's it going? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna change it. Hang up. I'll push the talk on one moment, please. Thank you. Thank you. Take your time. Take your time. So when you're ready, All right, there you go. All right. So welcome to Smite Talk. What do you want to talk about? Um, I wanted to talk about something that I'm surprised is actually not talked about more, and something that myself is pretty stoked about is. The addition of the Mayan or Mesoamerican dragon god, known as Quetzalcoatl, Kuka Clan, whatever you want to call him, <laughs> the Q god, Kong. the Q god. Yeah, yeah, the, that guy. And this is probably the one god that I will be so excited that's out of the game until High Res adds Horus into the game. Mm. But, yeah, but one problem I have, and, and it's without Quonk's current kit, is that because when I found out that rather than replacing Al Kwong and then maybe giving this new god a, a, like a different kit or adjustment that he's going to kind of inherit the same thing. And my problem is that even though you're replacing, you know, a new god with an old god's kit, I feel like the tornado ability, which in my opinion is the best zoning tool in the game, needs to be adjusted a little bit. And that's all I really have to say about that. And so, What do you think? What do you think, FG? Adjustment to the tornado? So so first of all, Mr. Uh, K K whatever his name is going to be. Um, <laughs> I'm <calling> Quetzalcoatl. <laughs> well, Quetzalcoatl is going to be the Mayan version, right? We're going to have the K K K K K K K version. Of yeah, well, I, it, it's, it's kind of like, you know, Jupiter is to Zeus with like Roman right. and Greek, right? It, it's, just, it's the same god, but anyways. Gotcha. So I think if, if, you know, I'm just guessing here, but I think that he's going to get the same exact treatment as Wukong and Humbots did. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they're going to change his tornado i don't know to be honest his tornado is a, an amazing zoning tool like he is the traffic cop of the jungle when you play conquest <laughs> if you want to just close off roadblock and no one is going to run through it now if, if you throw a raw hill in the middle of it i'm running through that crap i don't that's care right. about you raw that's right but al Kwan does it mm -mm, you're not running through it um yep uh, that's what makes his kit though like that completely that, makes that is his really kit. what makes his kit like when you look at that god, I mean, it's everything. I feel like like that's I see the value in that for yeah. sure. The only thing I don't like about Al Kwong's tornado is the fact that if you get to the very edge of it, you're in it for a milliscule of a second. You're just like <laughs> you just tap the tornado. Oh, you're god. taking some chunky yeah. damage over time damage, especially late game. I, I have an issue with that, but um, I, I actually hope they don't change this tornado because it's kind of iconic to to him. 
Yeah, because that's my problem with it too, because you can look at like another guy like an Ubers or Poseidon, and they put down the kind of like, you know, circle AOE clear thing, and like, if you step into it, it's fine because you, may, you might take like a little bit of damage, but alcohol, it's like, well, you, if you get punished for like hitting like a wrong directional key, and then you're just going to like take so much damage, especially if you don't have yeah. any protection, you're just going to lose like all your health, and I just get so frustrated about that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So anything else about Al Quang or the new guy that he'll, he will be? Well, dude, I did want to kind of touch on some designs because I know, like, even before High Res Stew leaked, like, you know, some Wuk or uh, Han Bats is to Wukong or whatever, as uh, Aquang is to whatever, like, when they had the, the uh, Smite Community Contrast episode and High Res Stew was there on his monitor and he had that uh, picture of the dragon, and I was like, oh man, I hope he, like, looks like that. You know, he kind of has, like, the. Um, you know, the, the the very feathery back and all that, and, yeah. and the wings. And, like, e even this person, um, her name is Cher. She, she's, uh, she she puts art on the, on the Smite Art Show a lot, and she posted the uh, really nice picture of him on Reddit uh, yesterday or the day before or whatever, and I'm like, I hope, like, he looks just like that. Like, because like, just the way he looks is like that. I will play that god. Like, even though if this kid doesn't have any like, major changes, I am going to play the, I'm going to play that god so much. Mm. That, that's yeah. Fun. When you look at the the recent ch track record of the uh, of the quality of the gods, like the polygon and like the designs and how good they look, I mean, we can expect. It's almost like we expect greatness all the time from high res now. It's kind of crazy. Like we <laughs> know it's going to be pretty good. And you know, Hercules. I'm not going to talk about that small headed guy, but for the most oh. part, when they release like a new skin or a new god and a new model, it just looks so good. Um, so I, I totally agree with you. I think they're going to go all out, and because. Tencent, they have to go all out. So it's going to look really, really good, no matter what, mm. I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good call. It's a good call. Well, thanks, man, for calling in. I appreciate it. Well, uh, I, I, well, but, dude, I, did, I will touch on New Wild, the, sure. the new New Wild a little bit. Yep. Uh, me and my buddies were talking today. We were playing a couple Siege games with her, and, we, and you know, again, like all the, man, her, her stun combo with her minions is just so destructive and everything, and I'm just like, you know, I, I imagine, this is just maybe my suggestion, I imagine that maybe, like, you know, early game for Ultimate's not, you know, really devastating, but it does, you know, really transition more in late game. You can end up doing, like, maybe 500 damage to people with, like, with low resistances. But I think the having a percentage shred on her minions versus a flat pen, because if you, mm -hmm. if you have, like, a hunter and assassin who has, like, no magical protection, she does true damage to you. Like, all three of those minions, she does true damage to you. So I think maybe doing percentage reduction, okay. which, uh, like, it won't hurt. Like squishy targets as much, but it'll still help you know, like maybe get through like you know tanks and you know warriors and all that. Yeah. So I think that might be a reasonable change mm -hmm. to her minions, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Okay, okay, no, it's, I can see that. I can see that working. What do you think, FG? Fake wah. That's all, I have to <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Well, thanks for calling in. You have a good night. Hey, thank you very much. Have a good. Night. All right, so I'm gonna test something here. Uh, F dot is is calling us in on the way back whoa, from Atlanta whoa. on the road. Uh, so, but uh, he's saying he's on go to meeting. So, because the raid call doesn't have it. So, I'm gonna go ahead unmute on on go to meeting here. Let's see here, and we might have to mute ourselves on raid call. Let's see. Let's see what happens. All this trouble for for F dot man. I don't know. I don't know if he's there. Hello? Hey, yo, Hello? what's up, man? I can hear you. What? Was good, Octane Broski. How's it going, friend? What's up, uh, FG? You still there? Can you hear him? I don't hear him at all. You don't hear hey, him. At all. all right, I let's... hear FG. You hear FG. <laughs> well, that that's all that matters. So, are you in the car, man? Are you in the car? I am. Anyway, long time listener, first time caller. How you doing, <laughs> Octane Pro? Well, it's so nice Love to the hear. Show. So nice. Oh, well, thank you. It's so flattering. It's so... <laughs> Wow, that is a typical radio station call and comment, by the way. I love exactly, it. Exactly, <laughs> right? But yeah, right now I'm in the I'm in the first mobile in the middle of North Carolina. Um, okay. It's it's me, Wolfie, Nantan sleeping, and Nantan's brother is driving the car right now. Nice. So so how you you are a veteran to smite events. Uh, how was it, man? Uh, especially being just a spectator. Uh, it was it was fantastic. I didn't have to work at all, which was Kind of, I mean, it was, it was bittersweet because I love casting and doing all that stuff, but it was really cool seeing it from, like, the crowd perspective. Mm. I got to get a feel of the whole, I got my finger on the pulse of the audience. Yeah. I really got to see just how everybody was absorbing the, the situation, and 
I'll tell you right now, the product of it, man, everything was awesome. If you watched the stream and you thought it was cool, the atmosphere in the building was electric. And really? everybody okay. was just excited as hell. Yeah, I mean, from our perspective, from a stream perspective, the I, I was talking about it on Smite Update, and I, I literally had to give props to High res because they took so many notes, you could tell, from the EU tournament at the ESL studio, and they just capitalized oh, yeah. on it because it was there. They had the, the tabletops and everything, and it, it was amazing. Like, I was very, very much impressed. I mean, from the production perspective, you could tell they had many more cameras as well. Um, what was what, We didn't really get to see a lot of the audience. I mean, I mean, what, what type of numbers was it for, like, the live crowd? Um, it was a smaller event, uh, and it was structured to be a smaller event. There was about 200... Uh, give or take people in the audience. Okay. Um, and and that, that was like basically there wasn't too many empty seats essentially. Wow. Uh, and it, it was like I said it was it was supposed to be a smaller event only four teams one day you know and it was really cool production uh, like you said production was off the wall and like I said in, in just the position to the launch event it was obviously a lot smaller there wasn't yeah, any sure. Know, sure. dancers or anything crazy like that but yeah. the cosplay people were there and you know there was a, like a photo booth set up and food and you know honestly the venue which mm -hmm. was sort of like i was talking to hyra's too about it okay uh the, the venue that this land was at is the second stage for worlds in january okay it's a smaller a smaller subject did you get a chance to actually go to where worlds is going to be and actually see the the big i guess arena you can call it Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just excited. Basically, this was a nice little appetizer to the mm. real meal that's going to be world. It was, it was crazy. I mean, it was, it was Nantan's first land, land environment, and uh, his, his brother as well. And like, they were, they were just, you know, they were very excited. Nantan sleeping, otherwise they'd. Yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, Nantan like. Well, how did you, what was your, what was your gimmick on the whole, how did you feel about your first land? Here, hold on. Yep, go for it. Um, it was a good time. It was a good environment. Everyone was pretty social and excited to be there. They were excited to watch the teams and they put on a show. So did it meet your, did it meet your expectations because you've always been uh, watching it, uh, you know, on, online and, and this was your first one. So did it meet the expectations or was it far beyond it? I, I, I was at RTX. To be fair. Oh, okay, and okay. I, I, I have been at a land environment before, and so I kind of knew what it was going into it. That being said, everything was run very well. It, it was professional, but at the same time, not overly professional. You know, it was mm -hmm. as a casual high res flare. Oh, excellent, excellent. Well, I think that's you know, awesome. Like they have that. They they just exude good vibes about them, and they're really down to earth. You know. You know, just people you can get along with. Yeah, and I think I think it's like that too. I think it's great. I was talking about it. How, yeah. Uh, sorry to cut you off there. No, go for but, it. Uh, the spy community, uh, more so than um, most other games, is very diverse. And the cross section mm -hmm. of the like the smite players, like you look at you know Todd Red, and it's a bunch of fifteen year olds, you know, and good, good great for them, great for them. But then you look at you know like me and Wolfie. We're just here to, you know, tear some things up. And then you have the shadow keys, who are very, like, the shadow keys and the crest that are yeah. heavy, you know. And they're all like, so different. And you look at some other games, and you meet the same person 20 times. And it's nice to, uh, you know, see that in action right in front of you. Oh, yeah. Everybody's but everybody gets along. So we all relate on, you know, over Smite. Oh, yeah. No, I, I think that's awesome for sure. I mean, a smaller event like this, very intimate for sure. Uh, I mean, my first launch event was uh, my first event was the launch tournament, which was a lot larger, it seems like, than compared to the other one there. So I think that's great, uh, you know, without a doubt. Um, to FG or, or, or um, is it FDOT or yourself? Anything else to talk about? Um, how about you ask FDOT? Hey. Hey. So, uh, so yeah, so you guys are on your way back. Uh, how long is your trip back? A uh, bunch of hours. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you leave. Like, like, how long did you guys leave? Like three hours ago or something? Four hours ago? Uh, we left at uh, five. Uh, it's like nine. We, we left at like three. I don't know. Basically, we woke up late. Uh, we, were up, we were up very late 
I bet you were. You weren't partying or anything, were you? No, we were, we were watching <laughs> cartoons and eating cereal just like you. Um, oh, that's right. That's right. Hey, I had my milk, too. I had my milk, too. <laughs> and, and the milk, exactly. I almost forgot about the milk. But, yeah, we, oh. we, were, we were up late just, just picking milk and watching cartoons and stuff. And then, uh, so we woke up a little late. And then we grabbed lunch with uh, uh, APC and hired Dan, I guess. He's yeah. Cool. Uh, I mean, you know Dan, but you know. Yeah, I didn't realize Dan. Was, I didn't realize Dan was working for High Res now. Good for him. Yeah, yeah, it's decent. He's uh, he's like admining and stuff. It was cool. Mm, okay. Uh, so um, we grabbed some lunch and then we hit the road basically, and we're Justin, where are we at? North Carolina. We're we're in North Carolina right now. So we're almost to not close to halfway. Uh, wow, <laughs> you got a long you know, way to go, man. Because I mean, I drove back. I drove to from Philly to Florida, um, Southern Florida, quite a few months back, and I know that drive. And that is not a short drive. I mean, what are you talking? Another ten hours, maybe eight hours? Yeah, but it, but it, it, it's nice because it's a straight shot. Yeah, um, it's just up eighty. It's just up ninety five, and yep. you know, it's four huge smite nerds chilling out, and we're just. I mean, we spent a lot of time. Wolfie was making fun of us on the tweets because Wolfie's funny like that. He was making fun of us because <laughs> we were talking about, like, smite strats. Yeah. <laughs> like, me and Nazan. I'm like, Wolfie's on the same team as Nazan. He should be happy as ADC <laughs> talking about strats. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Take advantage of that time well, for sure. Exactly. So we're, we're, having a, we're having a great old time, and uh, we're having a lot of fun out here. So, you know, we're all recovering from the excitement that was the land because yeah. the – all right, so I predicted, and you know, I, I got up on my high horse with EU, and I was like, yeah, you know, I called SK winning. Yep. Everybody needs to bow down to me. Uh, <laughs> Karma is a not nice woman because no, you did not I did predict not call this. No, nope. no, I did not. No, I think you I and was, I talked I was, about it. We're like, yeah, it's great they're going. They'll probably be out first round or whatever. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was, I was basically excited that they would go and experience it and then get knocked out, and I was like, sweet. Yeah. And uh, we got the we got a repeat of what happened in Europe, and mm. nobody could have predicted it. And yeah, you know, I was talking to the guys before, and I think this is one of the I think it's a huge moment for Congress for a number of reasons. I think that they've just matured as a team with the help of this land, and I think that I'm excited for their future. Uh, not just as a team, who knows, you know, things are so volatile all the time. But as individual players, it, it was really interesting getting to see. People like Gibios and Bush and Gar is just sort of like yeah, grow like mature right then and there. You know what I mean? So it was, oh yeah, it was, it was it was very exciting. And I mean, who who doesn't love a good underdog story, right? <laughs> it's unbelievable. Like uh, we had uh, Ionic on Smite Update uh, earlier talking with him and just kind of discussing, you know, how that worked out for him, especially being such a young team and. And, you know, with nerves and, and looking at some of these veteran teams that were in there, um, you know, just to be playing cognitive gaming and even, you know, older than that with like Dignitas, you know, and uh, he was straight up. He was like, dude, after we beat Cog, we were like all for it. Like we, you know, he's like nerves weren't an issue. We weren't afraid about going against land giant team Dignitas. Like I was impressed. I was impressed. I mean, it's. It, you know, we talked about Team Coast a few weeks back against SK Gaming and just blowing us all out of the water uh, and being surprised yep. with them. And now another young team. I'm waiting for the argument to come up that will be like, oh, you know, the, the speed and younger mechanics and APM of younger of younger ah. players. Yeah, I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for that conversation on Reddit. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to nip that one in the butt. I don't think age has anything to do with it. I think, yeah. you know, you look at losses and... Despite his lesson, so you know he, he wasn't exactly the highlight Lazarus that we're used to seeing. Yeah. Uh, this past yeah. weekend, I still regard Lazarus as one of the best players in the scene, mm -hmm. and Lazarus is one of the oldest players in the scene. Yeah. So I really like. I don't pay much mind to the whole like younger is better. Or they're you know this isn't football. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't Starcraft. This isn't there's Starcraft. Not, there's this not isn't Starcraft. Mileage. There's not mileage on that man's index finger. <laughs> like that's not how this works. But <laughs> that, that you know, carpal tunnel at old age. <laughs> but you know, there, there might be something to say about uh, the young kids' attitudes <laughs> and how yeah, they're, surprising. they're fresh to the idea of being competitive. So <laughs> that might be. I think that might be more valuable than uh, than the actual physicality of being young. But I mean, not... it was just it was super exciting. So. 
Yeah, yeah. Any, 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 uh, any big surprises to you outside of, of course, the results, uh, the venue, the crowd, the players, um, high res, anything that that was kind of. If you were to take one big thing away from this, outside of, of course, the underdog result uh, from this event, what would it be? Um, I guess outside of the actual gameplay, just mm -hmm. and and I can't say it's a surprise because production, every single. Every single event has stepped it up, and, you know, we see it even online step up, but, uh, you know, I was hanging out with um, Hyra's Brad and Hyra's Josh, a lot, of the, a lot of the guys that are in charge of that production staff, and, you know, back at the launch tournament, it was Hyra's Brad running everything and, you know, yep. a couple of people, and here it was Pon Pon, Techies, Adonis, just, uh, there was an army of production people taking care of business, Talking into microphones, just getting everything done, and it—you know—it was—it was a production. It mm. was fully done, and everything was exactly like Nas said. Everything was professional in the areas that it had to be professional, you know. And it—and it was just pulled off fantastically. So, like I said, I can't say it's a surprise because yeah. everything's been going. Everything's been pretty much balling, and it just continues to get cooler. But uh, that was. It was really cool to see all that. So I, I'm I'm hyped to see uh, just all the work that goes into it. It's exciting. Yeah, we were talking about that actually. We were talking about the last LAN, like big LAN event or that we got to see online really with high risk production, which was the launch tournament. And then if you look at the right. launch tournament and now you look at the NA event where you had the E the EU event in there, you know, I posted on Twitter and and even the Bill, you know, kind of commented on it on the fact that like high res. As I was saying, like if you were to do one, uh, one to ten, you know, high res probably launch event, you know, not be disrespectful or anything, it was probably like a two. But now I feel like with what they learned in the time with doing the online events and then doing the EU event with ESL and the notes they took from ESL and then going ahead and, and where they're at now, I was like, they're probably like a six or seven now when it comes down to production quality. I mean, the camera sweeps, the additional cameras on the players, the the discussions they did around the tabletops. I mean, it just all came out. The production value was astronomically better. Um, so I'm really excited to see what the launch or the, um, the uh, worlds will be when we have two more land events for them to prep for and learn from before we even get to the world championship. Yeah, I mean, World is going to be gigantic. World is going to be absolutely insane. Uh, Hyrez doesn't generally sleep. Like, <laughs> Nabil's already working on World. You know, yeah. these guys really, yeah. they, they, they put the pedal to the metal. They're always on the grind, so it's pretty dope. Uh, I, I mean, I was a huge fan of the launch tournament. I thought it, mm -hmm. I thought it rocked the house, but, uh, you know, it's cool to see the, the advancements that you're talking mm -hmm. about. Exactly, the player cam. I mean, anybody that's, an older viewer of the show definitely knows I harp on player engagement yeah. and adding, adding the individualism rather than just the character of the game. And yeah. player cams are like, number no, <laughs> with, all, with all that. So yeah. that I, was, I was hugely excited to see that. And, you know, like you said, ESL taught them a couple of tricks. They took a couple of tricks out of their own books. And, uh, you know, Kelly and Bart and uh, DM and... Trimer killed it as usual. So yeah. and, and checked the game as well. He was the MC. So uh, you know, good talent on the stage and that's it. And but all in all, it's all about the uh, the players the players some of the players had a lot of passion. Some of the players really cared. Some of the players were really excited to be there. And everybody working the event was really excited and really pumped to be there. And you know, having that having that passion there is basically what makes our game our game. And yeah. uh I, I, you know, I, the, the production is just the icing on the cake. So the passion yeah. is really what it's all about, bud. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, I'm going to let you go. Thanks for going ahead and calling in, dude. I appreciate it. Uh, from the thirst mobile. Is that what you're calling it? <laughs> yes. The thirst mobile. <laughs> we are uh, four guys. We are four guys stuck in a mini Cooper. Driving our way out. So it should Woo. be fun. You guys have fun with that safe travels, man. I'll talk to you when you get back. Fantastic. You too, you too. And uh, Chef uh, FG, thanks, yeah. for, thanks for being here. He's a man as always. And uh, thanks again for having me on the show. See you, man. Catch you guys later. Peace. All right. So let's go ahead and swap back to Raid Call. You still with me, Mr. FG3000? Still with me here? Can I... Go freedom! Oh, I don't know what was up with your audio. I'm surprised you couldn't hear him. Because, like, um, I don't. did you have it muted or something? Like the audio? No, muted? I, went, I went to live meeting. I didn't even see his name or anything. And well, yeah, because he was on the telephone call. That's why. 
Like, he was on telephone, so it doesn't show his name oh. listed. But that's womp, why I, I don't know what happened, but uh, it was good to hear from uh, F. Dot there, hear how things were going uh, on his way back um, for sure. So let's not waste too much time. Let's go ahead and grab another caller here. Welcome to Smite Talk. How's it going? What do you want to talk about? Hello, hello. Lily. Lili. Lili? Hey. Hey. Welcome to Smite can Talk. We can, we can hear you. I can hear you. That's all that matters. That's oh. all that matters. <laughs> So what do you want to talk about? Still there? I heard her for like a second. Hello? Hey, there you are. So what do you want to talk about? Oh, I forgot to press enter. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to talk about like all the, you know, skin remodels and like, mm -hmm. um, like what they did with Hades mm -hmm. with like switching up his old model with like the nightmare skin. Yep. I was wondering, like, and then like, you can still play like the old Hades can, like classic Hades, and that is awesome. So I was wondering, like, what if they do that with like the other cards, like Hell or Fake War, <laughs> and stuff like that. So, so what are, what are our thoughts on some of those other gods with reworks? Is like, that your I, question? What, 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 what if Iris integrated that into like skins, like using retro retro skins? into uh, the new models. Oh, okay. So you mean like the For the old... nostalgia. For I'm sorry, old... my English is off. I'm like no, no, that's again, okay. So. No, that's okay. <laughs> we appreciate it. Um, no, I think that'd be a good idea. I'd love to play the old Guan. I think that'd be great type of deal. Uh, I think that'd be a lot of fun. Uh, just not necessarily the kit. Um, high -res no, not the kit. Just, yeah, just, just the, the skin. skin. Yeah, yeah. Just, just for skin. old times' sakes. Yep. I think that would be awesome. I'd, I'd love to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure of all the details or how that would work. I know High Res Chris had talked about how, like, they couldn't make the, the god work with the old kit, but in regards to the skin, I think that'd be a lot of fun. What do you think, FG? I don't like it. Why? <laughs> Why not? Uh, Why not? Do you remember what old Ra looked like? Do you remember how bad he looked? Um, if if they do like maybe like a uh, like an old school like a throwback skin, mm -hmm. it would have to be updated in my opinion. Like I, yeah. hell looks terrible. Okay, how about a game mode? Okay, how about a game? Uh, how about a game mode that like a match of the day? Like a match of the day. Like an old school match of the day where everyone's yep. like old skins. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I don't really. I, I guess I'm alone in that respect that I don't really miss the old skins too much. Ah, um, okay. The 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 rose tinted goggles aren't strong with FG. Ah. The gunners are. <laughs> the rose tinted goggles. I don't know. You got to think about Ra. You got to think about Kali. Kali looked okay. Um, Kali would Ra be on you. Decent. Hell looked terrible. Old Sun <laughs> Wukong like looked terrible. <laughs> Hey, it's the thought that counts, all right? It's the quality. Yeah. Come on now. Mass of the day, I'd be okay with. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, thank you very much for calling in. I appreciate I it. Can I just say one last thing? Sure. Like, I am I'm, I miss old Nua. And, mm -hmm. like, I tried it with her and with the new, like, well, I don't feel like it works. Like, my clay soldiers, one time I tried, and then they just move away from the enemy. They just go to the jungle crypts, and there goes my chance to... Yeah, you know the I'm AI sure. on that could be updated that was a, a, bummer. To be a little better. <laughs> yeah, the AIs on some of the uh, uh, you know, I mean, I know they've been working on the AIs for the practice gods that you practice against, but I feel like the clay soldiers and some of the minions, the AI could be advanced a little bit better. Like I hate when all of a sudden I hate when like a minion all of a sudden breaks off and is like following you, following you into the jungle, and you're like, are you kidding me? Like, what is going on here? Why is it there... doesn't work? Yeah, it's like, what is going on? So, so yeah, I can agree with you there, uh, without a doubt. Um, for sure. But thank you very much for calling in. I appreciate it. Yeah, you too. All righty. Let's go ahead. Grab another caller here. God try hard 21. What's going on, buddy? Not much. Not much. So what do you want to talk about today? Well, I mean, this may be an outdated topic and all, but go for um, it. I really wanted to talk about Vulcan. Oh, he's so good right now. Just want to put it out there. Yeah, he is. But, mm -hmm. um, I can't help but feel that he was better when he was a guardian. What do you think, FG? Whoa, I do not agree. I want to know why you think he was better as a guardian. His kit was garbage. His kit was garbage. <laughs> Octane's taking, sparing no punches. Nope, <laughs> nope, nope. I no. think when he was a guardian, he didn't fulfill the necessary role of being a guardian, which meant initiating fights. Like, he could not initiate. 
All they could do is just throw down his thumper and his turret, and they get really, really big and scary, and then people will be like, all right, well, we're just not going <laughs> to fight in this area. We're going to fight over here where your turrets are not. <laughs> so I, I don't know. He had no way of starting fights. Um, so I think, I don't know, I like him as a mage right now. When you think about other gods, like, if you, you know, uh, you, you got gods like Sobek that starts fights. You have Athena, they can start fights. Bacchus, they start fights. They make the team feel safe to initiate, and I think that's what a Guardian is supposed to do, and I don't think Old Vulcan did that well at all. No, I mean, the I like what they did with Vulcan, though, because if you look at what a Vulcan used to be, his kit was very much based around his um his turrets you could say turrets meaning you know yep. his cannon and then also the thumper what was it like thumper 3000 or 9000 or whatever <laughs> whatever that thing it was definitely called. was the 3000 it wasn't that good whatever it was <laughs> whatever it was his kit was very much based around that so if that was placed and you just ran around it like his ultimate was and his ultimate was based strictly okay. off of that as well so oh my word i can't find my mouse to mute him all right here muting I couldn't find my mouse to mute him. I have five screens, and I'm like, where's where, my mouse? Where would your mouse be besides your desk? <laughs> You're so, a, what, I meant the cursor. I meant the cursor. Oh. I'm like trying to find the cursor. Like, oh my gosh, what screen is it on? I don't remember. Anyways, um, with Vulcan, his kit was very much based around the, those turrets there. Thumper 2999, right? So what happened was... Um, when you alted and you weren't nearby it was like such a waste or whatever but what they did was they went ahead and added in the meatball toss or whatever you want to call it and then also the his most ultimate. annoying ability ever and, it, and i know but it's so good and his ultimate in order to go ahead and counter the fact that his abilities were so static based around those items so if i was to base like one versus the other one per se like the old vulcan could have been a decent guardian you can say but there's always someone a better guardian than what vulcan was there was always a For better sure. option to be honest with you um when you look at vulcan now like i played vulcan the other day and i haven't played vulcan in such a long time oh my god his new kit is so good you do so much damage with that kit and so i love it i, I think vulcan's great um so i think fg and i can both agree that the current vulcan is, is a much better vulcan versus the old one for sure. For sure. Well, thank you very much for calling in. Do appreciate it there. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, we will... Let's see here. Let's talk about our next topic. What's our next topic, FG? Would you like to talk about our next topic? Let's do that. Let's do that. So, this is for, you know, everyone in chat as well as you, Octane. Because sometimes, you know, I just feel like me and you talk to each other and we get everyone else's input as we go along. It's, it's great. It's a great system. So, I, I want to know, do you think... Triple A game development studios. Now, I wanted to make sure I put Triple A game development studios because I realized there are some MOBAs out there. Like, uh, I think there's one called Loco. Loco? Lord Chaos Online. Some game. There was okay. another game that had a 3D perspective before Smite did. That was mm. a MOBA. Okay. But it was from, like, a really small, like, Asian company that was... It wasn't really that good of a game. So, do you think that going forward... If a AAA studio wants to develop a MOBA, are they going to use the third-person viewpoint like Smite, or are they going to continue to try to copy the League of Legends and, and a Dota style? Now, sure. the games that Great have just question. come out, like you have to think about Dongate, that game was being developed right around the same time as Smite, so they didn't really have the luxury to see Smite be successful. Yeah. But now companies do have about you know two years worth of seeing what Smite is, seeing you know how it works. So companies that are like, all right, Let's write down our business plan for a new MOBA. Do they do top-down or do they do their person? Well, it really comes down to your budget, to be honest with you, I feel like, because top-down is going to be cheaper 100% when for you're sure. looking at the engine uh, and when you're looking at the graphics and everything. I mean, look at – look at if you look at high-res and look at, like, what they've been – what they have on their career page, like what they're hiring for, it's all designers. And it's so crazy how, like, the designers are the different levels of it, like – like they're not looking for like 2D, like looking at like 3D gods and 3D animations, and and it's so much at this point, it's so much higher, and it really comes down to your engine. Talking about that for sure, that's a really good topic because I feel like, you know, it really comes down to the size of your, um, of of, of your studio or your company. I think High Res got lucky though because they already invested so much in into tribes, and then they and then they mm -hmm. went ahead and made the move over. Because if you go back and listen to like how Smite was developed. I think it was like Todd was like, hey, let's go ahead and try to take tribes, but go ahead and swap out some of the the characters with, with the like god models, for example, and change the map to be like a MOBA map and see what is it how see how that works out type of deal. Um, also on top of that, it's interesting you say that because on Reddit the other day, 
Um, Valve went ahead and made a post about their, I guess, the upgrade of their engine, and they're calling it like the Source Engine Number Two. Did you read anything yeah. about that? Yeah, I saw and, that. And I saw so, a bunch of Half Life Three confirmed memes. There together. was a video <laughs> that a um, a community member did. He went ahead and took that engine, and re and took the look of everything of Dota 2 and the gods of Dota 2 and piped it down in and pretty much it almost looks like and the guy was like here's the potential for it it looked very familiar to smite the 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 and what I mean and what I mean by that is the view but the thing is the atmosphere definitely had that Dota-esque atmosphere the fo like real heavy fog and the graphics look like that but instead of being directly behind the god it was like Behind the god, but then a step to the left, like almost over okay. that shoulder, running around and stuff like that. And it was like pretty. Like Gears of War. Type. Um, kind of. Sorry? Kind of. Yes. This always kind of at an angle. But not as close though. I feel like Gears of War. Okay. Pretty. It was like a little bit back, and it was really interesting. I don't know if anyone else in chat saw that Reddit post. Um, I think it really comes down to the size of the studio, because. But I say that, but then look at Blizzard. Blizzard went ahead and came out with like Heroes of the Storm, still knowing I that think Smite they were just was out so there. So deep in development, though. That I could feel be like true. They were so deep in development. Here, I think that Blizzard starts yeah. things years in advance, so I can understand yeah. that. I think for sure, if they if they were were able to start developing Heroes of the Storm right now, I think they would go third person. Just with mm. World of Warcraft and trying to get all those players from World of Warcraft to play the game, they would feel much more comfortable in 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 the most style controls with Smite. I think I, I really think you know Blizzard's this humongous company, and I could go on the record being totally wrong, but I think they made a mistake with Heroes of the Storm. <laughs> Dude, there's a lot of Heroes. I think they should have been a little bit more innovative. Heroes of the Storm is like the beginner guide to MOBAs. I'll be honest with you, like that's what I feel like. Like if yeah. I was, if I had like a ten year old sibling and was like, oh, I want to play MOBAs, I'm like, okay, play Heroes of the Storm. It's very basic, very simple, but. I'm gonna get like a whole bunch of hate and chat or email, or whatever. <laughs> but I mean, when I'm looking at when I'm looking at Smite, there, I think it's a great, I think it's a great question. Like someone starting up a MOBA company, what direction do they go? Um, you know, do do they go third person? Do they go with with it? I mean, Dota Two has been very successful with their with their bird's eye view perspective. Uh, same thing with Riot's League of Legends. Now, granted, like they were at the forefront of the MOBA scene. The MOBA yeah, scene was exploding yeah. at that time. And now I feel like anyone that's come behind the MOBA scene and just replicated that, I, I sometimes I'm like, why? Like, if someone is owning the scene so much like that, like, all of a sudden Dawngate comes along, or here, and it's like, what? Like, why, yeah. why, why are you and trying Strife, to, you know? Strife as well. It's like, you, why? You just get, you just you're, get reinventing, the... you're reinventing the wheel when everyone, by 99% of the of the gaming scene is going to use that, that other MOBA. So, um, yeah. I mean, I think I think High Res did it right in regards to the timing. They, if High Res could have been like a, it started closed beta like a year sooner. Uh, it, they, it, I feel like they would have captured the scene a little bit more. If they ca if they got in the scene a year sooner than that, oh my word, they would have been like at that same time period of like that MOBA explosion. Yeah, that yeah. would have been go that'd be going back Absolutely. like four that'd be going back like four years ago, folks. To be honest with you, like that's like. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Um, but we're still in a good spot right now because we are the only oh, yeah. other MOBA. Like yep. literally, when people say League of Legends, Dota 2, oh yeah, and Smite, which is great because they don't say, oh yeah, Infinite Crisis, oh yeah, Strife, yep. oh yeah, Donkey. They don't say those. I'm yeah. shooting shots. Yes, I am. Yeah. You, okay. <laughs> I will say right now, you know, Smite is in a very good place when you have League of Legends players and Dota players coming in during big esports tournaments and trying to trash talk smite in chat yeah on twitch you, you know you're doing something right if they feel threatened by it now granted half of the you know when you got fanboys and fangirls coming over from other games and being like oh your game blah, blah, blah. it's like really do you feel threatened because this game is in third person and you're still back in 2003 with your graphics Woo! or or what like you know i i love i love the legends of dota 2 can't you tell i'm telling you what's going on <laughs> <laughs> so moving on from there let's go do you have any other let's comments do you have bring any more? that's right let's bring it down a level i will <laughs> say that i really enjoyed the international dota 2 they had a noob stream where you didn't have to know anything about dota 2 and perfect. i actually enjoyed watching it perfect so uh, you know it's good stuff i i have i look up to dota 2 and league of legends from their esports esports perspective and what they have done with the game to make it so successful dota 2 with valve 
amazing job when it comes down to building the way they built their engine in order to be in the direction of esports and the way that they can have people jumping into spectator view the multiple cast multiple casters i mean they are they are something that we as the smite scene need to look to from an esports perspective 110 percent you know earlier Agreed. earlier talking down on like the graphics and stuff like that whatever you know whatever that's fine but when i look when i look at them i'm like we can learn so much from them and and i'm glad that high res is taking notes from them you know doing things crowdsourcing and stuff like that to increase our prize pool i mean it's an ex it's an excellent route to go Agreed. so let's go ahead we're going to take a call here from larks larks welcome to smite talk how's it going Whoa, 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 whoa. Chill. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. <laughs> echo, echo, echo. So how's it going? Welcome. So what do you want to talk about today? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, just changing all my shit. Uh, <laughs> Go um, for it. I actually want to talk about the fact that, you know, there's only really servers on EU and NA, and uh, I'm Australian, and, you know, I can't, tell. I can't tell. Of... I can't tell. I can't tell. I can't tell. Really? You can't tell? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, yeah, like for me, my main issue is the fact that, you know, me constantly playing with NA servers, I, I have to work with 250 or 300 ping, you know, mm -hmm. me playing as an ADC mm -hmm. or a solo, landing hits, it's just, uh, it's impossible, you know, like I could barely even play um, supports half the time, you know, but, like I constantly miss him as Frostbite. Uh, not frost spiders, uh, stun. Mm -hmm. um, Hercules, frost breath. I can mm -hmm. rarely ever. Frost yeah, frost breath. I can Hercules. I can rarely ever get the combo with his freaking, uh, his pull and his charge. You know, doing those two together in a combination, I'll hit maybe one out of six. You know, and that's yeah, if I'm lucky. And for me to actually play that, it's it makes it so difficult. And you know, I was just wondering, you know, is there any way for me to actually be able to you know, deter the fact that I have, you know, a higher ping than everyone mm -hmm. and be able to play as mm -hmm. good as everyone else. So unfortunately, yeah, I'm gonna, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to say you're probably going to have to suffer um, for uh, some time here. Um, uh, I don't I don't think we're going to see any more servers added till after long or till after the world championship, to be honest with you. Um, I think Hyrez sees the value in the servers um and and sees i mean they're the ones that are looking at the numbers to see where it's coming from but i also know for a fact that like if you're in australia and you're playing a game that has 300 ping you might try it out and enjoy it but then you go ahead and leave the game because the fact that the the ping is too high and, and high res can't lose that you can't lose the fact of like your your game is growing outside of na and eu and now you know china for example now brazil but what about everyone else that's the big question you know, we don't want to lose, you know, uh, Russia or Australia and stuff like that. Markets that are huge with, with gaming because we don't have servers close enough for you guys for ping. So I think that's something that high res looks at closely. The investment is huge, but I think the value is there. Um, you know, so yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I just don't with how much is on high res plates how high res is plate and that's visible to us now. And we don't know, we don't know 99% of what they're dealing with right now. I can say that, you know, it would be great for us to see more servers going on. Um, I mean, look at that high res response in the chat. Octane. The bill. We provided oh, servers yeah, for right tribes there. in Australia. We love Australia and we will add servers out there when the time is right. Look at that. Thank you for Done. playing on high ping. <laughs> now, Bill with the answer. Right. Cheers, Zero. man. <laughs> no, well, that's the thing. I, I, I don't leave games and even still with my delay, I, Good well, for you. you know, Quite often, I'll actually, yeah, um, destroy people in those games. I won't be the best player yeah, yeah. out there, but, you know, I'll still be able to, you know, do at least, you know, 12-2 or, you know, anything better than that. Mm. And, yeah, it, it makes it, you know, it, I'm just wondering the fact that if I didn't have that thing, I wonder how well, you know, it'd make it for me. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, FG? Any other comments there? Literally, I'm so glad that uh, <laughs> Nabil's in chat, so I have I don't have to answer now. That's yeah. right. That's right. No, I mean I think that's good. I mean I think the big thing from Nabil's statement there is when the time is right, and and we as the community don't see it. You know when that time is right. Is it is it a financial or 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 is it when it comes down to player numbers? Hey, we have this many players. Okay, let's go ahead. I don't know what they have exactly, but I think that's great. I mean I think it's good, especially for you as an Australian player, to know hey, like someone like Nabil who 
pretty much oversees everything uh, in chat right now is able to see someone like yourself call in asking for that, you know, dealing with that ping and knowing the value, you know, from that. And hey, I, didn't, I mean, I'm not a follower of tribes. Uh, I mean, I played it back in the day. Um, um, but, uh, you know, yeah, I, I think that's great. Yeah, I mean, I think that's great that they had a server then there. And so they see the value in it. So I, I all I can say, so, friend, is wait it out. They hear your complaints and it'll hopefully be sooner than later for you. Excellent. Much love. Cheers for that, guys. Yeah. See you later, man. Have a good night. That's awesome. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm happy that, you know, I mean, high res, high res is such a transparent company to the point where like they interact with the scene so well that's the nice thing about a publisher of, of high res's size versus like a publisher that is like valve uh, the size of valve or the size of blizzard where like they have like 10 community managers and stuff like that like it's very easy to communicate with high res and it makes it it makes it nice where like for example high res bill can jump in and be like hey you know we we know it's an issue BTW, by the that's way. right we, by the way <laughs> we hear your complaints we're working on it so so for sure i think that's awesome uh let's go ahead and bring in another caller here riven mick swagger how's it going hello hello well um i just had like a heart attack because well my volume was cranked <laughs> and then you heard my voice well hello yep so what do you want what do you want to talk about today <laughs> Um, I'm just talking. I'm just thinking about talking about stuff like against the meta junglers and stuff. Go for it. And how they are possibly viable. Like, for example, Nuwa jungle. Okay. Like, Nuwa jungle, lots of people um, don't see it as viable, but I okay. mean, like, um, honestly, if you think about it, she has a two to spawn minions so they can tank for her. Mm -hmm. She has a one which is an invis so she can easily save allies non stop. And that's also a very easy gank. Is also a very heavy nuke later on in the game and she has a three which is a stun she has um, a passive which is a snare she has global um, <laughs> presence so I don't understand why some people just don't see it as viable what do you think FG <laughs> um I'll, I'll just speak generally on when it comes to that kind of thing okay. a lot of people don't think anything is viable until someone shows that it's viable <laughs> it's kind of one of those things where, you know, you can you can preach up and down about this god is so good at this role. Please believe me. And people are gonna be like, no, don't put Aphrodite in solo. You're an idiot. Never ever pick Aphrodite. She's the worst god in the game. And then someone says, nah, -uh, look at this. Yeah. And all of a sudden people are like, oh my god, Aphrodite, ban, ban, ban. So Nuwa can definitely play jungle. The issue that you're going to run into, and I think people in chat will absolutely understand this. If someone tells you, don't go New Watt Jungle, she's trash, and you say, no, I'm locking in New Watt Jungle, I'm going to show you that she's not trash, mm -hmm. and then you have a bad game. That is the time. worst feeling. That's exactly what I did last time, and the Thanatos was just nonstop swearing at me and everything. Yeah. And eventually he just gave up to the point where he was like, you know what, fine, I'm going to AD carry and break the meta just like you. Mm. And then before you knew it, the whole um, team ended up trolling me by doing all five people jungle following me around yeah that, i that's tough. i think when people are looking to try things that are new and different like what you're saying i think the casual queue is an appropriate place for it uh not necessarily yeah, the ranked um, but not 30 yet, exactly like... exactly not necessarily the ranked queue but in casual queue if i jump into a game and someone's like i'm gonna play mercury support i'm gonna be like okay go with it it's not traditional make it work or if you're a hindu man and you're like i'm gonna jungle with nuwa and, and, sh and make it work. Now, granted, if you fail at it and sometimes it doesn't work, it's not necessarily your fault. It could very well be the fact that like the other team just was really good and capitalized on some of the uh, on that situation. So, I mean, it, unfortunately, you're gonna have players like that, but but don't let that mess you up. You know, keep pushing, keep pushing forward because yeah. I think it's good like, um... with, with trying out new metas and stuff like that. First time that I actually tried New World Jungle, my score was like 31 and 20 or so because mm. I was just nonstop having that global presence with my ulties where my whole team's like, hey, ulti now, there's like five people all low. Your ultimate's <laughs> going to kill them. Mm -hmm. Nice. Or like ultimate, now I'm going to die unless you ultimate. And then I just end up saving an ally nonstop because my yeah. ultimate has that global presence. Unlike okay. most junglers where it's like, okay, well, I need a gank because my enemy is at like 10 health and I just died. Okay. But you're all the way across the map at the wrong time. Nuwa can actually have that global presence and it really helps out. Hmm. Okay. No, no, I can, I, I can agree. 
And on top of that, she also has the minions, so when she's ganking a lane, if it's like especially mid lane where it's a heavy, heavy nuker like an Agni or someone, all that happens is she spawns minions, gets their magic resistance low, they are just gonna evaporate. Like, I use my Shred three... Shredded. Mm -hmm. I just used my three, um, first time I tried out Nuwa after she was reworked, and I'm like, holy crap, this character's so good now. Because, like, the old way, she just wasn't very viable or anything. No, that's a good point. That's a good point for sure. Well, man, thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. You have a good night. Yeah, you too. All right, let's Don't go be ahead. scared to ask your team in the lobby, too. I do that all the time. I say, yeah. hey, do you guys mind if I do Mercury solo? And sometimes people say no, and then I can kind of gauge how, <laughs> what type of people they are. Because some people are like, sure, go ahead and try it. Then you won't feel bad if you don't do well. But if, if you get animosity from your, from your team at the very beginning of the lobby, then just go for a traditional pick. If you don't, if you just want to avoid it, you know, any type of BM altogether. That's a good point. Yeah, that's true. I like it. I like it. Just, you know, I mean, it can't hurt uh, without a doubt. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of our, our um, emails here that we that we have Ooh. received. Uh, don't forget, guys, if you guys want to email in the show, you don't have the ability to go ahead and call in or uh, you're checking out the VOD and you want us to, you know, read your emails. Uh, we will check out emails, um, you know. So if you put an email in now, if we have a chance to read it, great. If not, we'll read it next show. But we try to get as many as we can. If you email the show and say, why does this God suck? You're probably not going to get, you know, we're probably not going to discuss it. Um, <laughs> so let's see here. This email comes in. It's uh, quite a little long here. Let's see. I just want to read through it real quick. Um, let's see. It says, with the new uh, remodel, even though the look overall was pretty good, I didn't find that she looked very oriental anymore. Um, is that something you think matter? Or not be so important since most people always say it's just a game um, uh, so uh, it says I don't think it should be visual apparent but Pantheon the character is on at uh, oh at first look um, so I guess your thought is is how close to kind of that native uh, Pantheon do you think that that she should look for say what are your thoughts there FG with just new uh, the new new uh. Um, I agreed until High Res Stu posted something that I can't find because I wasn't prepared for this question. <laughs> uh, but High Res okay. said, said I know something what about say. how, yeah, like the, these are the colors that were traditional during that time period. So it looks very similar to what we would consider like a Native American color scheme, but it was also very popular in China. And correct me if I'm completely wrong. So this actually is pretty accurate. But we're here in like, you know, in North America, we're just used to that being <clears throat> like the Pocahontas colors. Um, but, <laughs> excuse yeah. me, I'm losing my voice because I'm talking about fake wah. Um, fake wah. Uh, but in a nutshell, this is accurate. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, let me go to put the, you know, someone's asking for the email. It's uh, smite talk at gmail.com. Yeah, High Rise Chris was actually on the show uh, last week on Smite Update discussing Nuwa and, and some of the, you know, people, there was a Reddit post. Oh, Ten cents telling high res what to do again, and uh, blah blah blah. And you know, in all actuality, you know, Chris had come on and say, like, guys, like, listen, like, the reason that new oil changed was because the Chinese community came to Ten Cent, made the recommendations. Ten Cent came to us. You have to remember with that uh, in regards to it. You know, uh, we were kind of discussing, you know, the the influence of the community. Do you guys not realize the NA and the EU community have such a strong impact in the game? If we made a huge uh, outrage over something, something not being right, something that needs to be corrected, do you know how much high res does to make those changes or to apply them or test them? I mean, and so that's what occurred was that the, te uh, the Chinese market came to Tencent and said, listen, like this God does not depict what we see this God as. And Tencent, uh, and Tencent came to high res and said, hey, this is coming from the Chinese market. You know, that is what Nuwa, uh, you know, that Pantheon's coming from. Why don't we go ahead and make that adjustment? And it made sense, without a doubt. It made sense that, you know, hey, let's take the, the feedback from the community where this is based from and make that change. And, and so a, a lot of times I just love going to NA and EU crowd or Reddit members and being like, get off your high horse. Tencent's not telling anyone what to do. Just like Chris had said. They, they make their recommendations and, and the influence is there, just like the NA market influences, just like uh, Brazil influence as well. So, so that's kind of my thoughts totally there. Totally agree. We'll, yeah. take an, we'll take another email here. Uh, once again, you can email at smitetalk at gmail.com. Then we'll try to grab some more callers, probably about 20 callers uh, hanging out there right now. Uh, let's see here. Question. What do you expect high to accomplish before the Smite World Championship? 
Do you expect high res to continue the pattern of releasing new gods every major patch? Or do you expect them to create a new mode? And what do you want high res to accomplish? Uh, do you want them to release many more gods? Or do you want them to create a new mode? So I, that kind of questions ask weird wording there back and forth but uh, yeah. i'll throw i'll throw it over to you uh you know what do you think uh you know what do we expect high to accomplish before uh the smart world so Championship? new gods are given right mm -hmm. that's that's just gonna happen so i feel like and this is just me getting to my my my, my fake time capsule and just thinking that this is going to happen. That's so I right. think we're going to see more gym items in a good way. Okay. We're going to see more gym items. Um, I was talking to someone in chat before. Hopefully we see like things like animated loading cards Ooh. would be another really good cash cow for, for high res. So Take I want to see something like now. that. Take my money now. <laughs> yeah, that'd be so, so awesome. Um, I want to see something very similar to what Dota 2 did when they raised their money for their $10 million international tournament. I expect to see some type of, it's not going to just be Pool Sidon this time. Pool Sidon was last year. It was great. We, we, you know, we raised a ton of money with t-shirts and skins, but now it's time to step it up a notch. So <laughs> if you're looking at, if point. you're looking at the camera, I'm just like tossing dollar bills at the camera right now. Whoa. Just like take my money, high res. Take it. Calm down, Agni. Is that why you're wearing purple today? <laughs> That's right. It's my, it's my swag knee. It's my swag knee. Whoa. <laughs> Which is my player. If, um, if, so they, if, like if they put in animated cards, I'll be like, here, take it all. It's all yours. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, I mean. Uh, <laughs> don't forget one more thing. I want to see um, announcers, too. I want, basically, I'm stealing everything from Dota 2, if you haven't noticed. Yep. Um, oh, that's fine. I want, I want that's like, fine. announcers. You know, like, in, in Dota 2, you have, like, the Bastion announcer. You have, like, the mm. female announcer. The, you have all these different announcers. I want new announcers. Like, there's so many things that you can do to make people want to spend money with Smite. Mm. Where you look at a game like League of Legends, and I hate to throw that out there, think about this for a second. When you buy a treasure chest from, from Smite, don't even get me started on that. Spend the money. You're don't <laughs> even get me started. I have bought 35 so I've bought 35 treasure chests so far and every one beast. every one except for two has been a voice pack. And I've been like Oh yeah. Because I don't buy the voice packs because I don't really care about the voice packs unless I'm playing the gods that I play. So now it's coming to bite me in the butt right now because now I'm well, now buying you're all. Getting two voice packs per one. What's that? You're getting two voice packs for one now, so it's not that bad, bad of a deal. It's bad. It's bad because I don't want all. <laughs> I got the I got the fa the Feaster Bunny one, the, sk uh, the skin, which was cool. Oh, that's a good one. And I got the um, Jingle Hell, and I was like, okay, that's cool, but I'm not looking for that. I, I love playing Ymir. I have all the Ymir skins, even the Twitch skin. And I'm like, I just want that Twitch one. I'm like, I just, can I just buy it? Can I just buy it? Like, come on now. You just email Twitch. You'll get a Twitch skin. <laughs> email um, Twitch. The, email Twitch. The, High res, you mean? Facts. Yeah, high yeah. res. Yeah, email. Um, I'm okay, like, oh, my know. word. So I did like an opening. I did an opening on stream. I think my stream like had a heyday laughing at me because I'm like, really? Another voice pack? Another voice pack? I'm like, oh, my word. Stop giving me voice packs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the, the final point that I'll make on that is that when, you, when you're buying chess, you're excited because you know you're getting something. You compare yeah. that to like League of Legends. Oh, I'm going to buy a rune page. That's so, so exciting. Woo! Yay. Like what? that's not an exciting way to spend money. Talk about the treasure chest. What are your thoughts on increasing it to like 400 gems and then or, or more and getting like a multiple things in the chest? Like, well, make... like a small treasure chest, a medium, and like a yep. large treasure chest. Yeah. Thing? Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, I mean, for the consumer, it's great. I just yeah. don't know. <laughs> I don't know how that is. Take more money. Virus. Take more money. <laughs> Insert credit card here. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, okay, so let's talk about my thoughts here between now and the World Championship. Uh, from an esports perspective, I expect nothing. What I mean by that is everything that we have, that everything that we've seen scheduled so far is perfect. Um, I think we, I mean, in all honestly, we're saturating the esports scene with Smite. I mean, I can tell High Res is investing millions in, in regards to the the events. In regards to the when people look at it, the 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 tournaments, they're like, oh, it's fifty thousand, it's twenty thousand. Do you know how much money goes into that event outside that little tiny fifty thousand dollars? Like, have you seen the LED screen? Like, do you know how expensive that screen is? Yeah, um, yeah. You know, just how much they've been doing. So I uh, I think High Res is doing everything right, 110% when it comes down to the esports scene. Um, I'm eager to see what they do next season uh, for esports, if they, if they do something this complicated uh, or what they do. Uh, in regards to the game itself, you know, moving it outside of esports, uh, what, what do I expect? I'd like to see them slow down with the God releases a little bit. 
to be honest with you. Uh, you and I have talked about this multiple times where a god once every six weeks or whatever, completely fine with. But uh, right now I just feel like every other minute, I mean, Rom, Serket, I mean, just talk about the gods that have been coming out like right after each other. Yeah, they came out pretty quick. So uh, I'll tone that down a little bit uh, if I had a choice in regards to that. Do we need another game mode? No. I feel we, sh and I think High Res is moving in the direction between now and the World Championship. High Res is putting a lot of emphasis on custom. A lot of stuff has been going on within the custom UI, on the custom game options, and I think High Res is building on that. If you look at other games out there, example, StarCraft 2 and the custom scene, the custom games in StarCraft 2 are like 90% of the games that are queued for and played. Uh, and that's just StarCraft 2 that I know of just because I come from that scene. There's so much value in custom games. People want to play custom games. They love being able to develop these cool little custom games and stuff like that. Like, you know, I feel like high-res high can open up the door for those casual... Don't forget, casuals... I don't know the percentages. I'd love to see, like, Dry Bear or high-res release some stats and be like, out of the number of... Here's the total amount of casual games. Here's the total amount of ranked games. Just to show and give love to that casual community. But... You know, looking at that, I want to see a ton of emphasis on casual games. And I think we're going to be there where you can go in and customize so many things. You know, I want to create a conquest map that does or doesn't have towers, does or doesn't have minions, um, all different things. Like, like I'd love to see with it. Uh, God speed has been increased to this amount. Um, you know, all different, all different things that you can add into it, like vehicles that are added into it. You know, every all these, Whoa. all these oh, cool. About, like, okay, there's I got you. so <laughs> much that they can do with the customization that I feel like that they can grow that scene for that. And so that's what I'd like to see between now and the World Championship in, in regards to the game is, you know, let let's let's give some love to that to that scene that doesn't like the stereotypical um, MOBA. And, 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 and let's have some fun with it. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think they're in that, they're moving in that direction. They're moving in that direction. I think we'll move there even more. I, I think that's where we're going with it. So, so just what I, like I thought it. there. Good deal. Well, let's go ahead. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and take another caller here. Uh, looks like Gravity Blast will be coming up next here in uh, just a minute. So let's go ahead and bring Gravity Blast in. Gravity Blast, welcome to Smite Talk. How's it going? Hey, Octane, how you doing, man? Good. So what do you want to talk about today? Hey, so um, I want to talk about something that's been on Reddit posts the past months um, do it. pretty often. <laughs> so, um... So uh, there? I was wondering what you think about Smite. Go. Smite what? I feel like I'm going to open a can of worms with this. Do post, it. But uh, what do, do you it. think about that? Uh, we didn't hear your question. All yeah, we heard was my lacks items. Like, can you get? You guys can't hear me. Uh, yeah, we can, can hear you. Out. You cut. You cut out there. You want to ask your question again? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll ask it one more time. So, do you think Smite lacks items? You mm. think it lacks items for a MOBA game? This is my first MOBA, so I don't sure. necessarily have an opinion about that. But what do you think about that? Okay. Uh, the reason why I ask is recently I've seen like I don't want to name names, but I think some pro players have been saying. They feel like Smite's become kind of stagnant for them. Mm. And I wonder if that might be the reason, you know, because other than skill um, and skill shots, then after that, like, I feel like items might be lacking. What do okay. you think? What do you think, FG? Items. Do we have enough? What do you think? Mm, I hear this. Yeah, you're right. It's always on Reddit. And um, I just kind of feel like there's always, when you, when you add new items to the game, you run the risk of them being too strong or not used at all. And I, I, I really do feel like Smite is actually in a pretty decent position when it comes to items, because if you compare and contrast a game like League of Legends, they don't have skill shots. So when you think about a top played ADC in League of Legends, their skill ceiling is very, very similar. It comes down to how they build, how they counter build, and their team makeup. But in Smite, it's more dependent on your actual skill, right? If I was going to get Zatman right now in the lane, and he built a trash hunter build, and I built the best hunter build, I would still almost lose. No, I would. I would probably still lose, right? And I think. I think that's more. I think that's stronger. I think that's a stronger case than just having a ton of items in the game. That, uh, you know, you get to the point where you're just going to use the items that you're comfortable with anyway. So, I like the fact that Smite is less towards building the perfect item build and more towards it just being raw skill. So. 
You also That's have, just me. You also have to look at it when you're looking at items and remember, like, when you... There are... I, uh, there's, I like to see percentages, and I know Hi-Rez has some for people that, like, use auto-buy for your items and, and, and auto-skill because I feel like well, you have a ton of players out there. Ton! Uh, probably 25% that still have the auto-buy for your items on, I bet. And uh, that are just afraid to make that leap into purchasing items people get over it they start to do it as they play the game more and more but the thing is when you have your players go from auto buy to buying their own items i did that in dota 2 and league of legends and then i looked at it and saw the amount of items and was like oh my word i don't even know where to start there are so many items so i think there's very much a threshold and i think high res is at a great point right now with items i don't want to see a ton more items they're slowly adding a uh, they're adding items at a great rate that i wish we could get that rate set up for god releases um i, I think the yeah. items are at a really really good place they add one or two here and there they make adjustments to it because you have to remember like you add one item you have to balance that item with the other items that are within that like you add it with attack speed and everything like that so i think they're doing a really good job of kind of fine-tuning items right now i think you know you made a comment pro players are feeling it's it's, it's stagnant right now with with some of that stuff yeah i'm not sure if that's the reason but I, no no i give no. them the benefit of the doubt that it wasn't that they were bored with smite itself but maybe something yeah. like that after they have the skills whatever skill shots then it's just like they're missing you know different types of builds because i know for 80 carries i don't play that role Yep. But Freddy carries like they have cookie cutters and that's just, that's For just sure. like what they do, you know? But that'll all, I feel like that type of cookie cutter situation with certain gods and certain classes or roles, or whatever, will always be the case. You find, you find what the pro players are doing because the pro players spend the time to do the math to figure out the best items and then it happens. You could add in a thousand items, but you know, if you have that many items in there and, and people figure out the best items for the for every god, they're still going to be building the same exact thing time and time again. Now, granted, you have more of a pool to play with, so you could throw some curveballs in there and stuff like that. But you know, when it comes down to to items, you know, you have to remember, like, if pro players are saying, "Oh, well, I'm kind of getting bored because of the same item selection." Well, let's look at the casual players. Let's look at the rest of the players in the scene because, you know, and, and find out what works and what doesn't work. So for me, I think we're in a good place for items and high res has done a very good job at, at the rate at which they're releasing items. So that's just kind of my thoughts there. So yes, those guys on Reddit should just calm down about that whole thing, huh? Um, yeah, I think I'm they're focusing on the wrong things, I've, to be I've honest. I've seen it so many times, I thought it'd probably be worth just mentioning. No, I think, it's, sure. I, I think it's a good point. No, we actually, I don't think we've ever had that question, to be honest with you, uh, regarding items. So I, I think that's a really good question, and I appreciate you calling in. Thanks, man. And uh, I just wanted to say I've been watching the show since the first uh, the first episode, and I oh. think you've been doing a great job for the community, man. Well, so thanks. I really appreciate it. Uh, Octane is the man. Co comments, really like, comments like that keep me going. Comments like that keep me going. All right, man. You have a good day, Octane. Thanks. You too. Oh, I feel so special. All right. Get so out of here. Uh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, let's take a look here and see uh, what's going on. Um, let's see. Got an email in here from Alvaro. I apologize for butchering your name there. I personally play a lot of free verse three. I love you, um, but I dislike the map. In every aspect, as far as gameplay, and look, and look, do you? Oh, what do you think? Sorry, some, sometimes the wording can be a little goofy in these emails. What do you think? When do you think High Res will update it? This map in order to be better, or a better time playing. Wow, this email is hard to read. It might be, might be uh, bad English and stuff like that. So let's talk about three vs three map. FG, what are your thoughts on it? I don't like it. It was. It's not designed for three v three. I mean, mm -hmm. people have fun playing three v three, and that's fine. Three v three is fun. That's great. But that map is just not designed for 3v3. Mm -hmm. It's just not. It was made for 1v1 Joust. And I think, you know, in the future, not this year, uh, but in the future, I think they should probably design a map with 3 versus 3 in mind, um, in my opinion. But I don't play it as much as you do. Yeah, I uh, I, I probably casted 3 versus 3 for about six months uh, for Smite Central. So um, I, I definitely... I feel like I, I can speak on this topic a little bit more. Um, 3 vs 3 was brought into the scene as a very big test. People were asking for it. High res went ahead and put it in, and they definitely said, this will be a test. We will see if it works or we'll move it if it doesn't work. 3 vs 3 did very, very well um, to the point where, you know, um, you know 3 vs 3 was swapped over to, like, ranked or whatever it was there. Um, and I think it did well. I feel like at that moment, 3 vs 3 should have been looked at to, you know, have its own map for the game mode uh, for sure. The current map isn't terrible. 
but it definitely could have room for improvement. Um, you know, uh, the way it's designed. My biggest gripe with, with the three versus three map is the fact that you can stand behind the wall, directly behind the Phoenix, fire at the at the uh, Titan, and the Titan does yeah. not pull aggro. The Titan does not move. So ideally, you're never going to run in this situation, but ideally you could sit there and auto attack the Titan all the way down from 100 to zero health without the Titan ever turning to kill you. Um, so with that being said, you know, just kind of, you know, uh, I don't, I think that's a big, I don't see the, like what, I don't know the value in that. Like, I don't understand that. Um, looking at the rest of the map for three versus three, I like the jungle perspective to it. Um, the gank, the gank functionality on the three versus three is a lot less, you know, you don't have like a yeah. more, it's really just that one, uh, ability to gank in, uh, in the center of the map coming underneath kind of the tunnel there that they have going on. Um, so I like the map, um, uh, but I think it's a lot better for three versus three. I think it is de pretty big for one versus one. I think one versus one to me is too slow on that map. Like when, when I, I look at the gentleman's house, one versus one, no that's jungle. right. That's right. <laughs> I think I like, I mean, I just don't, you know, looking at one versus one, I think it's too big for one versus one, but I think it doesn't fit three versus three. Um, so that's kind of my thoughts on that, but thank you for emailing us in, uh, any comments from you any more on that map at all? No, that's it. I, 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 want a one vis I want a one versus one map without the jungle. Okay. And then I just want a design 3v3 map. Mm, mm. No, good that's what call. I love to see. Not this year, though. Not this year. We got other things to work right. on. Other, yeah, other <laughs> things to work on. That's right. That's right. Uh, As so I manage higher res is a Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Can we, call you, can we call you like Nabil Jr. then? <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. High res 3000. I'm here. That's right. Let's go ahead and bring in Cellular. Cellular, welcome to Smite Talk. How's it going? What's up, man? How you doing? Good. So, what do you want to talk what about? Dang, I haven't talked to you in a while. Shoot, I've been a uh, viewer since the first episode too. But last time we talked, we were actually using uh, Skype and not Rate. Oh, call, so wow, that was, that was a long time ago. I know. That's what I was just telling it in chat. I was like, wow, I haven't been on since like the last first six episodes at least. Shoot, it's been a while. It's, it's very hard to manage like thirty calls uh, using Skype. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. So um, what do you want to talk then, about tonight? Yeah, I'm going to talk about a few things real quick. I'll Go for uh, it. name them off in order and then we can Excellent. speak with whatever you want to do in order. Um, first thing was titles in Smite, kind of mm -hmm. like World of Warcraft had, like Arena Master, it. Gladiator. Second thing was going to be a Tron Shibalanke skin. Third was going to Ooh. be... <laughs> our third and fourth are going to be... Bring back Arena League, please, and bring back Domination. I know you don't like it, FG, but I'm sorry, I like it. <laughs> uh, I will let oh, I will man. let FG talk on these subjects. So we have a Shablanke uh, skin we're one. talking about. We're having what was the first one? Uh, the, it was uh, titles. Titles. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. Uh, then the different game modes. What do you, FG? Go for it. Tron skin approved. Um, Stamped. Uh, Domination, if it comes back in a different format. Now, let me be clear, this, you know, this doesn't say much, but when I used to play League of Legends, I used to play a pretty even amount of Summoner's Rift, which is what, what their Conquest equipment was. And their, what was the map called? Was it Domination? I don't know. I think it was called Domination League of Legends. <laughs> I don't play, I, I don't play, was, but, I don't play, I don't play bad games, so I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I don't play that either. FG, you're Starcraft, muted, though. you're muted. <laughs> Okay, FG, are you muted or are you good? FG, I can't hear you. I can't hear him either. I know. Did you just mute yourself, FG? Uh, oh, he no. Can. He's not in raid call anymore. Oh, he must have got... You're DC not in raid call. Oh, yeah, I don't know what he's doing. He's got some business going on. Well, anyways, I will answer while FG comes back to visit us. Um, Buddha, if you can watch him out when he comes back into raid call, that'd be great. Move him in. Oh, there he is. Let me move him down. Whoop. Yo, what happened there? What happened? So there? Someone heard me talk trash about domination and they hacked me. They hacked yeah, right. Computer. You liar. You liar. So, so okay. I don't even know what I was saying. S starting off, let's talk about titles. I think titles would be great. I think it'd be great to be adopted in the game. Um, I think some really unique titles would be awesome. But they can't put titles in like like convention skins where they where they hand them out dime a dozen type of deal. You know, I want yeah. titles to be very epic. Um, you know, and and where you and, earn them. You know, exactly. And I want them to be hard to get. Not everybody yeah. needs to get them. One, you can't buy them. So it doesn't, it can't be like acquire all these gods or acquire all these skins. Um, I mean, I, I'll basically. Sorry, I'm not going to interrupt you. 
Uh, a, ba <laughs> a basic title, kind of cool. Uh, for example, if you got all the gods, but you got all the skins, some type of like collector, like like master collector okay. or something like that. You know, something cool that'd be fine. But then I want to yeah. see skin. I want to see titles for different things in the game. You know, acquiring a certain level um, of of in ranked or or other things like that, or accomplishing a pentakill on every god. You know, stuff like that. Like I think there's a lot yeah, of really cool, cool. I think there's a lot of really cool titles that they can do in Smite, but I don't want them to be oversaturated. Like put together ten, make them really hard to get. Um, and I think it'd be really neat to see, um, in regards hmm. to the second, the Tron, the Tron type of look, almost like the Ymir, Digimir, yeah. but for yeah. Tron, for, for Shablanke, I like it as long as he's tossing those discs, like the discs, you know, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Saying, like his two would be his discs. His <laughs> ult would be like, he would see like in Tron mode, like it oh. would all be like blue and black. Love oh, it. That'd be, that awesome. be awesome. Yeah. But no one else could see except for you and your party, of course. Or you and your comrades. I Take my money. Cool Take thing. my money. I know. I would totally <laughs> put down. I would, I'm telling you, high res. I will put 600 gems down on that skin if you That's bring right. it out. That'd be awesome. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Um, and then the last one was regarding domination and ranked arena. I think ranked arena has potential for coming back once we remove the time cues, which Kairos Chris had talked about. Uh, I think the big thing, you know. Ranked arena got removed because the population was not there. And as much as the arena community that plays that game can accept it, high res has the stats and knows that, you know, hey, we couldn't do something like this. You know, we had to remove it because there wasn't the population. Now with the timer adjustment and maybe the scene has grown enough for the ranked queue for, um, for arena, it, it might be a possibility. Um, yeah, as for like domination... Domination can sit in the bottom of the recycle bin. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Your computer's about to crash. Watch out. Dang. No, it's not. I built it. It's not crashing. Oh, excuse me. Wow. <laughs> Cellular, anything uh, well, else you want to talk about today? Nah, we're good, man. It's actually Quayar. I know you always get it wrong, but it's okay. <laughs> it's Cellular. Wow, wow. It's Cellular. Uh, I, just, I just wanted to say uh, thanks for having me, but uh, I want to get off so I can let other people talk. Well, thank, thank you. You, you have a good it. night. See All right, let's go ahead, guys. We're going to take uh, one, probably one more caller, maybe two if we're lucky. Um, to be honest with you, if you guys didn't get a chance, you know, you called in, but you didn't get in the list, I do apologize. We try to get to as many people as we can, but we are limited by our time slot. Five to ten for the Smite update, and also with Smite Talk, we did start a little bit late as well. We'd be here, well, honestly, we could probably do this, like, all night long. People would call it at this pace. So let's go ahead. We'll bring in our next caller here. Don't ask me how to pronounce your name. Welcome to Smite Talk. How's it going? Hello guys. Hey, what do you want to talk about? Hello, today? hello. Okay, I want to talk about Bakasura and mm, love uh, him. Is so OP. And I don't know about me, because uh, I have got uh, 36 pentakills and 97 quadrakills with him. Yo, why don't you come play and... on my pro team? Jeez. Okay, <laughs> I, I just want <laughs> I just want to ask you one question. Mm -hmm. Is Bakasura is so great to get a pentakill. So I think that it is so easy to get a pentakill with him. Um, I don't know. What do you think, FG? Do you think uh, Bakasura's kit lends him to be easier to get a pentakill or no? Yeah, I mean, once you pop your ultimate, you all you have to do is just hold your left mouse button and right. he's going to hit everyone around you. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely agree. It's it's easy to get a uh, pentakill with Bakasura, but that doesn't mean he's more overpowered than anyone else. I mean, it's easy to get pentakills with Poseidon too. Mm. You know what I mean? So I don't think I don't think that makes him overpowered by any means. Yeah, I mean, I can say that. Um, you know, we talked about Bakasura last week. He was one of the gods that we kind of talked about. Was that last week or the week before? I don't remember. Yeah, a couple but, weeks ago. Um, we definitely talked we, about him. We talked about Bakasura. You know, we've been highlighting one god and god discussion per week as part of our conversation. And uh, I had said, you know, I'm not very good on Bakasura at all. I've never been good at Bakasura. But I see people play him and it's like, are you kidding me? Like, he just tears. He's a, he's a meat grinder. He just tears through people. Hence his skin that he has. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I can't disagree. I'm, uh, I, I, do I think it's easier to get a pentakill on him? Maybe in, I can see that in team fights for sure, just because of his uh, survivability. So I can see that. But um, yeah, thanks for calling in, man. I appreciate it. Let's go ahead and take another caller here. Wow, we had a ton of people drop out after I was like, maybe one or two callers here. I know. Uh, they're like, see ya. 
<laughs> the true cat man. Welcome to Smite Talk. How's it going? Great. How about yourself? Good. What uh -oh. do you want to talk about tonight? Um, I have a couple of questions. One, uh, the first one being, I main support in... Yeah! Uh, and oh, so, <laughs> my biggest problem is when I have an ADC who doesn't really know what they're doing, is there any way that I can actually be able to carry in a support role? Um, get, get your jungler in your mid-fed by just being just play, <laughs> play, a makeshift jungler. Play Hercules, maybe, <laughs> when he's not being played in solo. Pick him up. Uh, Hercules. Have fun with that. Hercules, Hercules. Um, but, I mean, uh, outside of that, uh, as a support, you're not really meant to carry. Uh, and you're not, re you know, I mean, you're, you're definitely a utility. Um, so unfortunately, I think in your situation, you're going to have to go ahead and unfortunately deal with it. Um, I mean, the best you can do is to hold your lane, not let your lane fail, I think is the best you can do. If you're in a situation where an ADC is not able to carry, um, you know, I think that's really the hard one. I mean, if, if you jo enjoy support, you may want to consider picking up solo, uh, which would allow you to, um, not have to rely on other individuals as much. And in a solo, you could definitely carry a team um, very well, to be honest with you. Um, if you uh, if you succeed in your lane and clear your lane so quickly, and then you can start to roam a little bit more. So something to try out. What do you think? What do you think, FG? What are your thoughts? Uh, I said my thoughts first, but I'll reiterate them. Um, just, uh, just be a, a really aggressive roaming support. Mm. Um, you're going to spend a lot of time in mid, which means you're going to spend a lot of times with your jungler. So get them fed. But if it comes down to it, if your mid's not very good, your jungle's not very good, and your ADC wasn't good, you weren't going to win anyway, even if you were really hardcore carry. So that's the only way I think you can do it as a support is get other people fed that aren't your ADC. There's no mm. rule that says that you have to get your, your hunter fed. Um, he gets fed by himself just staying in lane and just farming, playing PVE. So that's mm. fine. He'll that's be okay. That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, I'll, I'll allow you to have one more question, then we got to get our last caller in. So what do you got? All right. So um, what is the best way of getting into shoutcasting? Mm, I like it. Great oh, question. Yeah, it, Octane. Um, I think I, we should... I've just started, so I'm Sure. Not... <laughs> Not a problem. Um, so I, I used to be into a lot of, uh, I, used to, I used to, when there was not as many commentators out there, um, I started getting into uh, commentating. And the way I did that was I went ahead and reached out to the community and um, asked for games to go ahead and commentate. Um, so first I started out and asked for them on Reddit and people posted the, the IDs and then I went ahead and um, when I had time, I went ahead and commentated them and then I posted them on Reddit and that gave me a lot of, or on YouTube, that gave me a lot of practice. My biggest one was going ahead and, uh, where I grew the most and where I grew a larger audience was to go ahead and be like, you know, po I, I go ahead, post on, on, on Twitch and, and put, you know, casting cognitive, for example, cog or root versus curse is when I started getting into it, like that all, all the way back then, um, and game, whatever, you know, recasted. And so I recast the big team games and people love that. They wanted to see that a lot. I put that on uh, YouTube. I think some of them are some of my biggest game, uh, biggest videos that, that have been, um, that have been picked up. And so I did that for a long time. Um, and then I started to get asked to do a few, uh, tournaments and, you know, I'll definitely be the one to say I, I am not at all a, a an amazing uh, commentator at all. That's kind of why I moved away from it because you know I did it, um, and then you know I moved more towards three verse three, and I did three verse three, and I loved three verse three, um, and I did three verse three for Smite Central for maybe six months somewhere around there, uh, week after week for the NA scene, and uh, so that's where that picked up from. You know, doing that and Smite Central gave me an opportunity. And I loved it, and I and I knew it, um, and I knew the three verse three meta and everything. So it worked out really, really well. And uh, but I will say, like as time has gone on since when I started doing it with Root and Curse and moved on to it, there has been so much better talent that has come into the scene, and they do a fin more, they do a better job than what I ever could have done uh, in that scene um, with with the talent that's out there with 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 people like Dry Bear, uh, Bart, DM Brandon, Cret, F Dot. Um, you know, those individuals, uh, Hindu man, Hindu man. Uh, I guess we'll talk about him. <laughs> uh, no, no Hindu man for sure. Uh, that have done a phenomenal job. And, and some of them have been around as long as I have, if not longer, uh, some of them I have. So uh, that's what I have to say about commentating. Um, after I stopped doing it, it was a shame to be honest with you. Um, 
when I stopped doing the three versus three and a for smite central i got messages from people that were like hey our team dropped out of the three versus three tournaments because the commentators make the tournament um and we just feel we just feel that you know there isn't really any good three versus three commentators right now and uh i got several messages about that and i love those type those people made me feel loved about it as a commentator uh and it's a shame because i feel like the three versus three scene has definitely kind of fallen apart because it was really good competition you know you're talking about when cognitive gaming what was doing three versus three and your wizard was doing three versus three so um that'd be my recommendation is to start out small don't expect i as a commentator if you were just jumping into it do not try to if someone comes to you and is like, hey, you want to you come and cast our tournament? I'd be like, uh, my recommendation to you would be hold off on that and, and do some solo casting. Uh, you know, you'll get your feet wet, you know, cast replays. I think that's a great starting point. And your replay availability is endless. You know, if you can get the replays from the NA or the EU, well, actually, no, the EU ones won't work because after every patch, the previous replays no longer are able to be, to be viewed. So get the NA numbers if you can for the uh, games and go cast those post them up on reddit post them up on youtube send them to me i'll go ahead and review them and be i'll be the first person to be like hey you're doing great here you could do better here um i'm not an expert but i definitely don't mind giving advice so that'd be my recommendation nice all right that sounds good good. well thanks for calling in man i appreciate it all right thank you for helping all right we're going to take one more caller here then we're going to close out the show here Jake Buds, welcome to Smite Talk. How's it going? <laughs> where did that voice come from? Not too bad. How are you? Uh, that came from my mouth. That's where it came from. Uh, what do you want to talk? What do you want to talk about today? So first things first, I just want to say thank you because I'm the last one. I didn't want to make you yeah. go over too far. No but problem. One thing I really want to talk about is I really like to see a new Mercury skin. Uh, oh, I like it. About this before, but go ahead. What do you got? I, I want to see a Flash Mercury. <laughs> Done. Ah, so generous. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what, what yeah. what's your question there? So what about Mercury? What do you want to see? So like I don't know like I I've seen like the Flash Mercury. I've seen the Tron Mercury. You guys were talking earlier about earlier tonight about the uh, Zablanke Tron, but I think Mercury might just do it maybe a little bit better. Or I don't know. What's your input about that? Oh, can you imagine a Mercury Tron where like all of a sudden he like jumped on the bike? No, like he does his ultimate and you see the laser behind or the jump <laughs> yeah, or, yeah, or, like you ju- or he jumps on a bike and does that the bike's even better he jumps on like the speed like the tron bike and you see the laser behind him oh that'd be so cool that'd be so cool yeah i like it i like it patent that sucker get on it that's awesome uh what other what other mercury skins can you think of there um i don't know there's a couple i, I like the flash idea uh hmm. i had one i'm having a brain fart now <laughs> but uh i was thinking about it earlier what what other ones can you <sighs> think of yeah that'd be good though that'd be good i mean you know uh i think i think mercury's up for a skin anyway you know he could use one uh without a doubt because yeah. like there's so many gods that have like just like they have the recolor skins and then they have like actual like completely different skins and like mercury and hell for example don't mm. hell's probably tough for them because yeah. they, they have to make two skins with that. Which yeah. Is yep. Not anyway. yep. But I'd really like to see the Mercury. I think it would be really cool. Okay. No, I like it. I like it. Well, thanks for calling in, man. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. All right, Before folks. you end the show, before you end the show, Drunken oh. Master Mercury is what I like. Drunken it's made Master. to look as him throwing like a big bottle of booze. His <laughs> attacks are like all Drunken Master attacks. He rolled. Right, that's what I want. I want Drunken Master. All right. Go ahead. End the show. End the show. Thank you for letting me know that. Um, So guys, we are going to go ahead and close out the show. Reminder that this show is available on iTunes and also on Android using your favorite podcast app. Just go ahead and look up Smite Talk um, and check it out. We have a lot of people that on the way to the gym or on the way to work or at the gym, whatever, that enjoy listening to Smite content. Um, And and so that's where you guys can find it and download the show. Um, Thank you to everyone who has left Smite Talk five-star reviews, getting us up there. Uh, I think we're listed third right now. Smite Talk is listed third um so we're making our way up there i think it's like smite update um uh dead workers party and then smite talk um on itunes Hmm. right now there's a few and then i think after that there's like smite uh, there's one other one i think it's like smite disciples is down there and stuff like that so anyways uh outside of that i'll throw it over to fg fg where can people find you when you are not on the smite talk show you can catch me on youtube every single day just posting all kinds of just randomness 
I do skin spotlights, I do highlights, I talk to people in vlogs, I post gameplay, and also have a very special video coming up this week, so you might want to subscribe so you can check it out. Fit, uh, YouTube.com slash Fitness Gamer 3000. <laughs> you might need that. You might need that. I just wanted the last part. I didn't care about the rest of it, you know. Um, I know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, outside of that, um, let's see. Uh, special shout outs to High Res Studios for allowing us to air Smite Talk on their channel, twitch.tv slash Smite Game, if you guys are checking out the VOD. Uh, the show airs every Sunday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Um, and uh, so please check that out. Please note, there will not be a show next week. I will be at a wedding that night. I'll be traveling to the wonderful city of Chicago. And I will this be... is news to me. That's right. Hey, hey, you're just like everybody else. You know, you got to get the news. Oh. Late, you know? <laughs> um, so there will not be a show uh, next week um, and uh, unless organized or we'll figure something out. Um, so from myself, FG3000, thank you guys very much for joining us. We'll see you guys next time. Take care, folks.